8 o'clock when it comes our turn to do Cumberland Farms. They're still working on Cumberland Farms. And then they have, I guess, two other permits. So they're, we're going to swap at 8 o'clock, look them up here, and we'll go down there. Um, assuming, I hope, that they take their boat uh, by 8 o'clock. It seemed like they were close to uh, closing public comment. Yeah. Yeah. Are they not even close public comment? <laughs> yeah, they're not through the public comment. <coughs> So, uh, the other thing, Carolyn is gone uh, and can't make it tonight. She has a child care issue, so Wayne's going to be staffing. So, um, that should add, what, an extra hour to our meeting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we have Wayne go up and babysit? <laughs> <laughs> Second. <laughs> um, and so, the first thing on our agenda was um, Kensington Estates. Um, who was asked for a continuation? Wait, I don't know if they've asked. Oh, they have asked till the ninth at seven thirty. Yeah, and they've done an agreement. So we always ask for a written agreement to protect us. Okay. To waive their rights for saying it's taking too long. And um, do you know why they just weren't ready, or they're still working with the DPW? It's still issues. DPW is very concerned about um, utilities on the westerly entrance, the sixty-six side. The sixty-six side, whether those pipes will be under water, and they're not sure they'd want to accept the road if the pipes would be under. Right, that was the very wet side. Okay. Um, Any other issues as well, but that's the big one. Right. All right, so they're not even close then for the DPW to sign off on. Right. Uh, Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All right, so Kensington will be on for the ninth. Um, Carolyn sent out a list of uh, some smaller topics that we can uh, discuss. Um, one of the things I just had a question about before we get to that, Wayne, was. Um, for the first meeting in January, which is the mm, one, two, three, the tenth, tenth. Yeah. We don't. I don't think we have anything on the agenda. I'm not sure if you would know that, but I don't think. I don't know the answer. Okay. Currently, I don't think there's anything we on the agenda. We certainly can't even be sure they're planning things. Either, there's no problem. Right, but I. But it's. Uh, I think Carolyn said there was a possibility of something might be coming in, but um, okay. as far as I know, right now we don't have any permits on the agenda for the tenth. Oh, the 12th. First Tuesday 12. to 12th. Yeah, we hope you do, actually. Okay. We're filing, Monday is the deadline, and we're filing for um, uh, Florence Theos, the Florence Recreation. Oh, yeah. So hopefully you're going to have that. Okay, the soccer fields and the baseball fields, right? Why do they need a permit from us? Uh, site plan approval because over uh, seven acre. parking spaces. Oh, what about the acre disturbance? They need a stormwater? It's a stormwater permit, right? For you guys, it's the number of parking spaces they need. So, okay. so we'll do that probably on the 12th then? And they did get their money from the CPA, so yeah. they did. Yeah, they did. They did. Though I don't know if they got the grant. Still waiting. Still waiting. Yeah, it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Um, Wayne, do you want to do? I mean, do you have any particular order you want to do these things? Or you want to do? It doesn't matter to me. I have this presentation for you guys. I'm just rezoning, and then the other things that are on that list. So whatever order you want. Uh, yeah. Let's see this one. I don't know why I don't have it. Kind of clean this page up. Let's do just a couple of quick things before we do the presentation. Um, the minutes from 1110, uh, everybody get those? Yeah. Okay. We're moving back down there at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Been wandering around looking for this. Um, any comments on the minutes from 1110? I spent a couple of days there with Carol and I don't remember what they were, but I'll You already said them, Carol? Yeah. Anybody else got any comments on the minutes? Who's going to any discussion? All in favor? All right, minutes. Um, the reissuance of the release of the lot. This is the, um, the one on 66. The ridge. The ridge. Um, I thought Dunphy was the road that was this off the road. Oh, I'm sorry. This is, yeah, that's, I this said, oh, is the, you're right. The other solar this is out near you. Yeah, this is the ones at the end of Dunphy Drive. Yeah, right, right, right. If you remember, there's a cul-de-sac. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, White Oaks. Right, and what what um, what is the reissuance of that one? Uh, they never recorded the old one, um, and the bank wants a new, clean one. So Todd never recorded it. The bank took over the property. Right, no one of those properties got taken over. Right, and so rather oh. than just finding Todd's old one, they'd rather have a clean reissue. Okay. So, you, so you already voted some time ago to release this. Mm -hmm. um, we're releasing the covenant on it? 
So, so this goes back to 2004, October 14, 2004. Yeah, I think, I, I think he Brady voted would be the only one who was here. Uh, voted the covenant and locked rate. It was apparently never recorded. Um, the bank took over the property, want to make sure they have a clean title. And the covenant is for? For that lot within the subdivision. Basically, the covenant says I can, we won't build on this property until oh. the plan board signs off. Okay. Uh, is there anything special about this that we should know about? Or? No. Again, you, you voted before. It's really just to reissue it so the bank has a clean record. Okay. Anybody have any questions on this one? No one. <laughs> Second. 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 All in favor? Oh, Fred, Devin? Are yeah. you voting? You have a question? Oh. <laughs> what, what was this um, parcels around the Central Business Florence, et cetera? We haven't got to that yet. Oh, okay. We're doing the easy stuff first. Right, we're doing the easy stuff first. So we did uh, the minutes, the release of the covenants. Um, and is this, uh, yeah, let's do, let's do Wayne. Okay. Can you get a chair? Oh, it's okay. I'm sure. Oh, yeah. just, you can get a chair. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can grab it. So, if you remember, we talked about right. a series of zoning changes before you guys, maybe in September, I think. Um, and these zoning changes came from, sorry, the project. Um, these zoning changes came originally from, we looked at all the institutions in town that are being surplus, you know, possibly Florence Grammar, uh, possibly parts of Park School, Smith College, Catholic churches, um, and sort of thought, okay, we've never really paid a lot of attention to the zoning because those were all exempt uses. When there's non-exempt uses, we need to think about what's the right zoning for that year. Um, and so you guys talked about this in September. We did a presentation to you and sort of a few approaches um, that we might take for that. We said, that sounds good. We went out and held two community meetings, both on November, uh, Wednesday, November 16th, one downtown and one up at, at JFK, to get input and then are reporting back to what we heard to see if you're willing to go forward to council and we can talk about what we started at and what we're recommending now going forward to council. So this is sort of, you saw the same presentation whenever we did this in September, but now it's revised so much for the changes. So this is the first one. This is Hawley Street. Everything on the east side of Hawley Street is currently owned by the Catholic Church. That's the, the Catholic Church there. Um, and on the south side of Phillips Place, that's the parking lot owned by the Catholic Church. So that's what sort of got us looking at this area. Those properties, the three buildings in the parking lot, are currently zoned to Urban Residential C. It's not going to be you know, multi-family homes doesn't really make sense with the Catholic Church there. So we we're looking at this, and that becomes central business. The um, uh, uh, post office in Augie's are already central business, so it's sort of, you know, it's, it's next to a central business system. In doing this, we also looked at Hawley Street and said we should be cleaning this up at the same time. And Hawley Street there had a few different zoning districts. Um, the first building is the condo building. The next one is the... Um, you know, the old lumber yard, um, that's what it's now, an athletic car. One of those is own neighborhood business, one is own special industrial. We think it makes sense for all those properties to be zoned to urban residential city. The old I'm yard, sorry, to be the old lumber yard, yeah. Yeah. now you're, you're Was that? Central business. To be zoned, yeah. yeah. We also, in September, we also looked at going all the way down to Pauling Street. And that was a little more controversial in the public hearings. Um, more concerned, and I, and I think our suggestion is let's focus on the things that are pretty easy. So let's do the low hanging fruit now. We may want to come back later and look at the rest of Hall history, but these seem pretty simple. So, so you're going to the end of the um, health club? And the health club, and then you see how the health club property actually wraps around. So they have some parking that's behind. I don't have a laser point here. Um, Around so that L shaped piece will be getting that property as well. Just so we're not leaving an isolated industrial. What's on the other side where it's a pearl tree and all of that? So that's already downtown. That's, but is that central business? That's central business, oh, right. right. And in fact, that property, that's, that long pen building is the depot. Mm -hmm. the, prop, the zone district right now is the center of railroad tracks. So it doesn't really matter in the railroad tracks except for, for consistency. 
it's really more down west on the east side of the river. And over to Bridge Street, that's also a central business. That's correct. Yeah. So this is just bringing us more into conformity with the, it's the neighboring right. spot. So, question. The church owns the church itself, the hall, and then they also own a, a two-family house. And what else? Uh, I think they own some outbuildings. I think that's the main... There's three main buildings. Yeah, in the parking lot. The parking lot across the street. The in the parking lot across the street, right. Three main buildings are the church, the hall, and... Like the rectory or whatever. That is the residence. But then there's another two-family house that people live in that the church actually owns. My question is, is that all... For the church house? Where is that? It's like kind of on Phillips Place, but it, it's that easement that goes back into the church parking lot. Oh, right, so this building doesn't show up here. So that's like, with that one thin building, is that's the hall. So you're saying there's another building that's not shown up in this in this yeah, building? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that would be part of this church as well. So, yeah, that, that one right be. there? No. The little teeny thing there showed up like a... That's what I thought. It was, it was under yeah. that brown line right there. No. It should all be going. Uh, I was wondering about possible yes. what negatives there could be about things something in the central business. <coughs> what effect does that have on existing so residences on the first floor for instance? Yeah. I mean, it's not, none of the, well, neighborhood business allows that that building doesn't have it anyway. So you couldn't do a new residence on the first floor. They'd be grandfathered. So the, the rectory or the two-family home would be grandfathered if they didn't change. If they wanted, if they changed away, it became an office building, then they couldn't change back right. on the first yeah. floor. So they can keep the residential forever, but as soon as they move it, they lose their grandfather. But the whole idea of more mixed use uh, neighborhoods would be excluded from this if it's all became central business. No, no, central business is the most mixed use of everything. Including yeah. residential? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't allow residential. The first not the first floor, first floor but second floor. Above floor, right. What reason people like where central? So central business we always talk about as being a carrot and stick. Mm -hmm. The carrot is the most permissive district. You can have an office on the second floor and go to housing and go to retail mm -hmm. and go back to anything else without even coming in. You, I mean, literally, a tenant can change, you know, and ask the plan. The stick part is when you're in central business, you're also in central business architecture. So, it, it, in essence, this is, you've all heard of form based zoning. Our downtown basically is form based zoning. We're saying we're really permissive about uses, but we're not permissive about. What it looks like. We want to, yeah, look, the, it's the structure of how it looks like. Uh, the residential house that we're talking about almost has a kitchen on the first floor, and that's the only kitchen in that building. Okay. Um, I don't know if that matters. So the no, it's so not, that's not the house I'm talking about. The house I'm talking about probably addressed maybe Phillips Place, but okay. the church owns it, and it's that easement that goes back into the parking okay. lot. We did, a we did We did a discussion. We talked about carving it out as being a separate residential district. But the problem with it is it would have no frontage. So it would actually be more non uniform It's 36 Phillips Place. Okay. Yeah, it's my old word. So. Yeah. But yeah, so we, could, if we, we couldn't really practically carve it out in a different district because there would be no legal frontage. So it will be central business. It will be central business. I think that's preferable. Yeah. The whole, yeah. Just to give you an example, it's exactly like that. If you go down to Center Court, there's a few single-family homes in Santa Court. They've been there forever. It's been zoned central business for eons. Um, a, one of those has been diverted to offices. Now there's offices on the first floor. They couldn't convert back to housing on the first floor. But there's two or three or four other ones that are still residential on the first floor. And the idea of not residential on the first floor is residential sort of a dead spot. So you like that to be more alive on the first floor. But above the first floor for exactly the reasons you're saying. You like that. So what, when we look at this, we came to the other meeting that we heard the public talk on. What are we supposed to do? So if you guys had to make, so we're doing this slow. We, we talked to you with this outreach. If you are willing to go forward, you'd make a recommendation to city council. 
it would go to city council. Well, they were referred out when we have a formal public hearing. The form we did before was an informal process to let us be heard early. So this will come back to you one more time for a public hearing that you do with the ordinance committee. You can change your mind again then. But so you're going to present all the, these changes to us now, and then as a group we're going to, or are we going to go one by one? It's up to you. I think one by one might make sense because it's fresh in your mind what's up there if you have questions. Um, maybe vote all at the end, but at least if, you know, make sure you get a, a flavor of the board now. Well, it certainly makes sense to me. I mean, it could go. Yeah. Does this differ at all from the earlier presentation you made with the well? We went further down. Well, nothing here is different, but the other one also went further down. Well. So in two neighbor meetings, we went all the way, okay. almost the whole area. Was there ob objections from the public? Well, there was some there was concern that there is a storm sewer that's right along um, Hall Street. And central business, one of the restrictions is the building can't be more than so many feet back from the street, can't be more than 10 feet back without a special permit. So one of the concerns was, well, we know there's a storm sewer, we know it's really hard to build on it. So we're setting up every single redevelopment project to require a special permit. And you could build a public storm sewer, but it's much more expensive. So that was that concern. Yeah, because you've got, what, um, shoe fix and, and have, well, you know, and the reason it had to go as far back was because of the storm surge. Right. Yeah. It's all kind of commercial. Right. right. Well, that's what I was thinking central yeah. business made sense, but yeah. the setback. You know, I still want to, we still going to ignore that. It's we're really doing easy stuff now. It may make sense that should be general business instead of envy that it is now. Yeah. Um, so should we vote on this now? Or, or this, is there a sense you want to go forward? You can vote all at the end. Either one's fine, I guess. Well, we'll let's do them all at the end. Okay. Yeah. okay. Let's, 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 let's just move. move. There's like eight of them, right? I know. Well, let's okay. stop yeah. looking at this one and move on. That's okay. what I was trying to yeah. say. So Con Street, similar thing, this is also pulled back. So this is the Northampton Market on the corner of Old South and Con Street. Uh, you know, the Cumberland Farms look alike. Mm -hmm. And that's their neighbor business. Then there's two multifamily homes, one of which already has a law office in it, and a box office, and I mean, three, three homes and offices, I mean, two of the three. And then there's Paradise Commons. So again, it's, it's neighborhood business, you are seeing neighborhood business. We're suggesting all the central business. Um, earlier, we were showing going all the way down to the senior center. I still think that makes sense, but there was some concern for the neighborhood about that much development there. The issue, you know, people have this vision of central business allows 65 foot tall buildings. Mm -hmm. And they're worried, what is 65 foot tall building? Mm -hmm. you know? And it's a big, just an example, we rezoned State Street, the, east, the west side of State Street, 20 years ago now, to URC. In that time, we had the only new construction project was the bakery. But we've had a few doctors' offices, or a few lawyers' offices come in. So it's that, you know, we get that kind of evolution. We don't get people who want 65 feet. I'd love it, but we don't get it. You know, I mean, the Strong Block, which is the biggest new building we have, only built three stories in its life. So I don't think you get that stuff. But people How tall is um, Con Street? Selva? Selva. Oh, probably 75 feet, I guess. Um, the reason I'm also happy pulling back is we're going to the Senior Center, frankly, because that seemed like a low hanging fruit. We have to do a study and look at all Con Street something. It's just weird the district changes every 20 feet. But there's no need to do that right now. Just trying to get the... the there were the, some, some residents, as I recall, the meeting I went to, who were kind of concerned. That's why we're pulling this back. Yeah, that was... Uh, that was yeah. Yeah. And so around it, the green, uh, the olive-colored areas are all... What? They're all residential. Yes, it's re pure residential. Well, a pure residential zone. There's some res commercial uses. So I'm just wondering if, how to, is this like an island that's surrounded by residential? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a peninsula. Yeah. In the midst of. Right. But again, what it has already is three or four businesses in that place. Yeah. Yeah, so nice. it's, the reason this one seems easier is it's already built for the density of central business. Mm -hmm. So it's not even getting a demand to tear down perfectly good buildings. The only building that should be taller is Paradise Commons. And frankly, if they wanted a second story, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, okay, so these are, this in some ways cleaning things up. So the big square in back is River Run Apartments. 
Um, it's zoned general industrial. It hasn't been general industrial for 40 years, but it's zoned that way. It's not going to change from housing to where it is the closest that we have to what it really is. And then Drossel's funeral home, which is zoned industrial, it's also not an industrial site. And whether it reopens as a funeral home or something else, it's going to be a business use. So this sort of makes life easier. It gets rid of these, you know, everyone there is non-conforming when, in fact, we like the uses that are there. What's the, one is GI to SC for Drossel, and one's GI to GB. What's the? So there's a tiny sliver that's too thin to even see. Oh. SC is the flight plan. No. So we're correcting the flight plan. Were we going to eliminate one of the two GI or GB? Put them in a class and then put one. Um, we've talked about that. We've talked about it. Not neither one of those. We've talked about making a um, a village center district, but it would basically be G. We might rename G. Right. But not necessarily do something different. Okay. What's the tail grid? You know, it's like a triangle. That's zoned in industrial, uh, heavy, you know, general industrial, um, and that's the interstate that's right. I see the interstate, but I was thinking more that little triangle is just going to be two pieces. Oh, um, so just to the left of your also Yeah. Right. So that's where Mock is, the sporting goods place. The, so how's that little triangle? So that would stay GB. So all, the rest of, of Damon Road is GB, right? Okay. So Drossel's funeral home is sort of an in holding within that GB. So this would be Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, this one is the West Farms area. So this is the one we're talking about getting rid of zone district eventually. You know, and a neighborhood business doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, and so we're not getting rid of neighborhood business, but as we do rezoning, we're looking at what's the appropriate place for them. And this seems like one that makes sense to go from neighborhood business to general business. So this is Jim's Variety Store uh, in West Farms. And Jim's is at risk of going under, frankly. Neighbor business doesn't allow, like, they talk about owning a pizzeria there. And neighbor business doesn't allow having a pizzeria there. And the issue is, there's fewer and fewer mom and pop grocery stores around. They need to bring in some other business to keep alive. It's a good place because this neighborhood is a fairly long distance from either downtown Northampton or Florence or East Hampton to the three commercial areas. So having a tiny little commercial center makes sense. So the, the main core of this is going from neighborhood business to general business. That's the big one. Then the rest is cleaning things up a little bit. On the, the west side, the left side of the screen, that's up a steep hill. That's never going to be business district. I don't know why it's zoned business district. So we would rezone that residential, which is what the rest of that area is like. Doesn't it make, because it crosses two property boundaries. Right, it makes sense. That's what's up. Well, no, but so does the RR. Oh, everything else is RR, so it makes it. Yeah. So that oh, okay. weird lot that makes the, yeah. the shape, that actually has a house on Turkey Hill Road. And that's just how we have the minimum lot size requirements. Yeah, that little the narrow strip point. at the top? Yeah, yeah. we change the zoning system. Yeah. Like that, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, the house is in RR, the entire lot should yeah. be in RR. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so all these are cleaning things up a little bit yeah. in the area um, to match what, where they should be, to, and to match property there. And there was a lot of conversation about that in terms of the hill there. Right, right. 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 exactly. Um, and then this is Leeds. Um, I'm actually going to suggest you don't take action on this. We didn't have anybody from Leeds that came to either one of the meetings. And I talked to Joe, George Kohat, your former you know, board member, and he's going to organize an outreach with the Leeds Civic Association. Um, so, you know, he's very interested in it. They may actually be interested in expanding it, having it, the zone, rezoning cover even more properties. But hmm, if they're willing to do an average, I'd just soon put this on hold. Mm -hmm. so, um, then this one is two properties. The property on the right is the old Florence Grammar School, which is now Florence Civic. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Florence Community Center. And this would go from urban residential B, which implies we want to be two family homes to office industrial. Um, whether the city keeps that property or sells the property someday, having more flexibility for the building is probably a good thing. Um, right now you can have a community center, which is what they are. But like from time to time they've wanted to rent offices for for profits, and that's not allowed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it'd be a great use for the site. You know, if you can't make it all if you you know if you can get for profits to pay part of the rents to keep the rest of the building affordable to educational uses, I think that'd be wonderful. Well, it's mostly parking lot there, so. 
right now. That's exactly right. So would that be able to be developed? Yeah. Um, it's very steep. I mean, the parking lot, it's a flat parking lot and a very steep drop down there. So it could be developed where there's a market for it, I don't know, in theory. It could be developed. Um, and then the property on the left is the Florence Mini Mall, which is on neighbor business, which really doesn't fit. Like right. those two restaurants there, neither are allowed in the current zoning. They're grandfathered. Mm -hmm. General business would allow them. Now that said, it's a new grandfathering, which is, in general business, we don't allow parking between the road and the building. Clearly, they have an enormous parking lot between the road and the building, but they'd be grandfathered. Yeah. If they ever tore down the building and started all over again, we want it to look different. <coughs> if they didn't, then that needs to continue. I don't know, did anybody from the property owners of that building? No one came from that? Came. Um, that one either. Right. It's sort of weird shape the way it's sort of tucked in there, too. There's almost like some big snowware. Right. So, right. Yeah. 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 So it's the best Chinese restaurant. Best Chinese restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the owners are planning to do anything. Don't threaten the Chinese restaurant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Didn't the, uh, the, the, the Rite Aid that was in there close? It wasn't it? Yeah, yeah the well, Rite Aid. Closed. And the laundromat's in there. Oh, so somebody went in. Sam. Oh, the right end is going to close. I can't remember when that new restaurant. The right end is going to close. No, yeah, that new breakfast. Yeah. The restaurant, I can't yeah. remember the name of it. Yeah. It took a month to Yeah. I talked to Robert Ross at Florence Civic. He had some concerns about rezoning the um, community center until he knew if the city was selling the property or not. But I'm not sure that really matters. It seems like it's what's the right use for it as opposed to right. yeah. I am going to meet with him in the next couple of weeks, so I'll get their input before it's going to start falling. Well, the only here. thing that would be is because so many of those schools were turned into residential, you know, right. an URB, in office industrial, could you make the second floor residential? Uh, only if it was live work, but in URB you couldn't need it. URB allows two family homes. So either way, it's Oh, so you couldn't convert it to all condos now anyway. Uh, right. right. I thought URB allowed more than two family. Less townhouses, side by side townhouses, oh. which we often get greater density, but wouldn't work for a building like that. Right. Yeah, and most new dense projects in your BR townhouses. Right. So the last one is tax. This covers three or four slides. Yeah. I should just back up for a moment and ask a question. Why office industrial rather than GB or something? Um, it's a traffic issue. It's not a great site. There's no on street parking on the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is on the side street, um, on Corticelli, but it's not. Um, because you start getting your neighbor across the street, it retails a lot more traffic and a lot more impacts. So I think for that reason. Um, and the church is right next to that too. And we've so thought about rezoning that as well. Is that church, are people still going there? Yeah. It's so just actually both by whatever denomination is. Oh, Elizabeth Seaton or whatever. Uh, no. no it's, it's a temple too. It's a temple too, right? Yeah. That's the reform. Oh, oh, that's right. It's not a yeah. And we thought of doing that one as well, sort of the same answer is it seemed like it's too much. You know, again, trying to deal with the, the low end. Yeah. We also talked, frankly, directly across the street on the corner of Pine and Porticelli for the old nursing home. Yeah. Um, we should think about that at some point. But those just, we're trying to get really, the, you know, the problem we have with all these changes out of sustainable in Hampton is that we do everything we want, we never do anything. So we're trying to get off our plate the ones that seem really easy. It's still so a nursing home, though, right? Yeah, yeah it's also good. Yeah. Okay. I went to market a few years, and it didn't seem to go anywhere. But it's, you know, it's not a business model that size place that's going to survive for yeah. long. So we need to talk about it. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, so then there's a series of four slides of color. So this we talked about in the past, but this is ignoring maps. When you have a commercial property or industrial property and the zoning changes, the old use is grandfathered. You all know that. But because education uses and religious uses are allowed anywhere in the Commonwealth, when those uses cease to be used, they're not grandfathered because they're allowed by right. So that means when, say, the College Surplus of Property or Clark School or the city or the Catholic Church, there's no grandfather of those properties. And so how do you reuse a big Catholic church in the middle of a residential neighborhood that's zoned single family homes. So this is, in essence, an attempt to do two things. In essence, an attempt to create some grandfather, if you will, for those uses, but also to create a strong incentive to encourage property owners to preserve those historical buildings. So it is, you know, the, the goals are here, allow adaptive reuse of the buildings themselves, 
great big center for the for you use the buildings. Um, but still, because these are middle neighborhoods, have planning board meetings. What are you thinking of as incentives? Well, we're oh, okay. Um, so what we're talking about, the way we're talking to finance is educational religious buildings built prior to 1940. So you can't you can't create a dollar. The Catholic church or some other church can't buy a house in a residential neighborhood and then come before the planning board and say, I want to buy a hotel. So we're only talking about, you know, old properties. They have to be used for at least 20 continuous years, and at some point in the last 10 years. The reason for the last 10 years, I don't want to reopen things that were settled. So for example, we used to own a church at your old ward in Williams, I mean a, a school on Williams Street. It became condos. I wouldn't want some of that to come into the offices. So we're only talking things that have been used relatively recently. Um, and then the definition is in quotes. That's exactly what the state defines religious education uses. So those are the things that today are exempt under our zoning. Um, and then here's the incentives, uh, Catherine. So in a residential district, wait, you got to go to PowerPoint class. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's exactly what you're not supposed to put on the slide. I'm sorry. Well, you, need, you need some little animated. Yeah, yeah, this is actually so everyone can see. <laughs> see, you can have this on. So you can follow it at home unless the print would be too small anyway. Oh my um, goodness. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll just look at it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't even read that. I can't read that. Okay. So, but I'll walk you through your Instagram words right now. It is to say, in these old buildings, so only in the old building, the building that's been there since 1940, you could reuse the building for any any education, I mean, sorry, for any residential use, for any live workspace or any office, provided that no more than 20% of the space is medical office or office and see a lot of customers. So it is to say, we want a lot of mixed use in these buildings. It would be great if someone took the old church next to the high school, or it took you know, some other empty building somewhere in town and put mixed use in those buildings. Um, but we're worried, because our neighborhoods, we're worried about really high traffic uses. And so doctor's offices, banking, Service offices that provide service to the public, they're allowed, but not more than 20% of the square footage. So you can still have those uses. Everyone loves doctors because they pay the highest rent, so they're the ones who pay the freight to convert these buildings. But everybody hates them because they see, you know, six patients per hour per doctor. You know, so they're not So this seems to find a compromise. So we allow a lot of use, that's the carrot. Um, the stick is you have to save the building, you have to give a historic preservation restriction in a form agreeable to the planning board. And you have to come before the planning board for site plan approval, so you get to look at all the details. Um, and there wouldn't be a minimum lot size. You know, you have to save the building. And then we're acknowledging, you have to save the building, but you could come in and say, here's my big building, it's 80,000 square feet. I'm only going to save 40,000 square feet. That's fine, but you're only grandfathered for the 40,000 square feet. You know, whatever you save is what you can reuse. You can't tear down the building and put a modern building. The one exception, because we have a real problem with seismic codes, um, is it's really hard to reuse some of these masonry buildings. And the trick science people do to new them more is the trick science people do to make these buildings more seismically stable is you put an elevator shaft up, which serves the elevator use, and at the same time you're using it to stiffen the building. Mm -hmm. So we know you put an elevator shaft up outside yeah. the building. And that elevator shaft is also anchoring part of the building to, to provide some stiff. So that's what Smith did on the old chemistry buildings? They needed the space as well. They needed a, that was really more about needing an elevator shaft. Yeah. But that's only what, so you know, when, like that. yeah. Like mm -hmm. um, when, uh, what's his name, um, Tom Douglas was arguing for saving the old name. That was his argument. He could put a couple of elevator shafts on the outside and that would be the size of the building. Mm -hmm. okay. So, you know, so it's a carrot and a stick for, for doing it. Um, Clark School is obviously very much in our mind because they're surplus in the property, although their current buyers plan to do all residential, so they may not use any of this. But I use a Clark School as an example. Clark School has a pool. Now, unfortunately, it's not a historical building, but that pool will be legal for Clark School. If it becomes housing, that pool will be legal for people who live in, in the Clark School to use. But what if they wanted to let the public in five hours a day to use the pool to help pay the freight. That's not actually allowed in Arizona. You know, it's probably a bad example because it's not a historical building, but you could imagine, you know, or I, I, here's a Clark School maybe that might be true. They're talking about housing, which would be great, 
but this one building is four stories, but it's sort of half a basement and half come out. That's not going to be very attractive apartments, but it could be a great place for some offices. You know, offices want to be in the first floor. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, allowing that flexibility might be great. Now, their current buyer's not wanting to do that, but this would give that flexibility. What about St. Mary's? St. Mary's actually is own central business already, mm -hmm. so they don't have that problem. I mean, okay. they have a problem with how expensive the building is to fix up, but the use would be allowed. Mm -hmm. So was, was the choice to do rentals versus condos, was there a reason for that? Do you know? For which? Oh, I don't know the answer to that. It's interesting. The only thing I can guess, this is totally a guess, is if the buyers asked to put that there in the National Register of Historic Places, they'd be eligible for historic preservation tax credits, which are only eligible for income producing properties. But I don't know if that's what they had in mind or they saw the market to support it. Um, the other thing is, remember, zoning doesn't regulate the ownership. So they could be apartments today when the market recovers compared to condos. You would never see it. We won't. Would we have to see, or were they going to have to come and talk to you guys about the conversions? Because it would be site plan approval at the very least for converting the single building, or we're going to look at a plan for the whole site. Either way, yeah. Or probably either way. I mean, it's a, a tiny building that's below the parking lot threshold, but under most scenarios, they got to come before you. For because of what? Because of parking? Because of parking? Because of parking? Maybe on the thresholds as well, but so on down. Right, because I mean, the only thing I know, and I'm not sure if you guys, the only thing I know is what I read in the paper, which said they're not going to change the footprint of the buildings. That's mm -hmm. their, their goal. Right. Is, right. Right. So that's why I was wondering how much are we going to have in terms of. There's plenty of parking up there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Are there a lot of parking? Yeah. I mean, what, what happened with this sort of conceptual idea? What about parking? Well, right now, you know, I'd like to reduce our parking, and we've done it already in a lot of districts, but um, right now, some can always come before you for a special permit to reduce the number of parking spaces. And in particular, one of the ways you can do that is saying, I have a mixed-use building, mm -hmm. so my peak demand for housing is at night and for offices during the day. Mm -hmm. So that's something else that could come before you as well if Clark School asks for reduction. Mm -hmm. They have lots of parking, <coughs> but if they're talking about 75 units, I don't know if they have 150 parking spaces. And if some of the parking is not near, like right. if they increase the density of this building, the parking lot's way over here. That's right. Mm -hmm. But one of those, for example, for Clark School, where this might come in, is the lot down 11 acres, which is big enough for the 75 acres, or for the 75 units they're talking about. And if it's all either condos or rental and one ownership, that's fine. But there could well be some logical reason why they want to have one building owned by one company and one building owned by another company. Um, and then a lot size could get away. Or I'll tell you something else, actually, from a affordable housing perspective. In your city, a lot size is determined by how many units you get. So they have enough land for 75 units. And so that's going to drive them to have a lot of units that are 2,000, 2,500. They don't have enough, enough lot size if they wanted to have 90 units, some of which were 1,000 square feet or 600 square feet. So zoning in essence would stop them from having smaller, more affordable units there. This would say, but we don't we care about that. that. That's not what we're buying into exactly. That's where our current zoning is. But this would change. This would change, at least in the historical buildings. This would say, right. and, and they would have to buy, you know, again, I'm thinking of Clark School, it's going to apply to other properties as well. If there are eight buildings in Clark School, I'm making up the number right now. Mm -hmm. They could say there's one building we want to have a lot more units the zoning would allow. Affordable. We're putting historic preservation restrictions. Mm -hmm. Well, either affordable or what's sometimes called market rate affordable. You know, if the units are 900 square feet, there might be no affordability restrictions. But they're still starter units. Mm -hmm. If they're 2,500 square feet, they're not affordable to most people. Mm -hmm. And is there a way with this, is there some way we can reduce the, the parking requirements? I think we should. I think it's still a lot of pushback from neighborhoods. So this at least would, so your existing zoning, which gives you the right to waive parking, mm -hmm. would remain. I personally would like to reduce parking much more dramatically. We just decided to do it incrementally, so we've done URC now and highway business. Um, I guess it's the first two. So mm -hmm. we should, that's not necessarily low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. So this is is residential districts. This language here is almost the same thing for commercial districts. Oh, sorry. Wait, Fran, did you have a question on the oh, last slide? I just I wanted to, that's what I wanted to clarify. But that's okay. Going okay. So this is residential, red, and, and here's commercial. Same basic thing for commercial districts, except that cap on the 20%. 
goes away. Mm -hmm. If you want to take St. Mary's, the rest of St. Mary's, and make the entire thing a medical office complex, you should be able to do that in Tennessee. And you can have residential on the first floor? Uh, and you can have residential on the first floor, right? Again, that's the incentive. So here's the, here's the challenge those old buildings. The staircases make it really hard to have commercial in these buildings. Because you can't, you have to put an elevator in, you have to have a handicap accessible entrance. So St. Mary's, you can get in the basement, but you can't get in the first floor. Or maybe it's a sub, sub level, whatever it is. So you could imagine that building, it might be better off to have housing on the first floor. Um, so it gives you that flexibility. And, and even though I love not having housing on the first floor in these buildings, that's the trade off for preserving these old, wonderful, particularly churches. Well, that's, yeah, that was. Why, why is there such a prejudice in the They're dead spots. There's a lot less for traffic. And neighborhoods are really sensitive. As soon as a block where people stop walking, people don't walk behind them. Huh. You know, I, I, do th I think that one of the factors in making um, yes computers work was the fact that when somebody on Pleasant Street, the old SRO building, that we got rid of the units on the first floor right along the street and we were commercial. It made that street more friendly. It's still, it's still residential in that building, but it's back. It's hidden there. It's hidden the because it's, it's like, you know, there's windows. People look at this more vibrant. Yeah, but it doesn't there other situations where it's prohibited anyway? No, I mean, it's definitely prohibited. You know, I think we should look at it. The thing I'd like us to revisit is, is thinking about that one sitting on the Pleasant Street where they want to avoid the cost of an elevator. So they wanted residential units on the first floor. We wanted the street to be vibrant, and so the compromise was that residential units are behind the building. I think we want to think about that. We may want to think about in central business and general business. We want to say all the part of the building that faces the street should be commercial. But other than facing the street, residential might be fine. Okay. Yeah. Hey, uh, sorry, it's good. Uh, it's quarter of. We yeah. have it downstairs for eight. Um, that's it for this. Oh, that's it. So the proposal then would be for us to move to approve this and send this to City Council minus the leads. Yes. To be referred out to start with. I still move. Second. Uh, any other questions discussions discussions or comments? Well, I'd like to see a little more which, to which part? This part? All, 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 all separate ones. Thought by, you mean, detail more information or thought in terms of? Yeah, more information. I mean, uh, short of having to go to the meeting. Well, we'll have one because this is going to come to us anyway. Right. Could be a public forum or more open meetings for this. Right. right. It needs to be a legal public hearing, right. so we notify all of them property owners within the districts and do it do that way. Well the city council will do it, they'll refer it to us. We'll do it with the zoning I mean the um, ordinance, ordinance, ordinance committee. Then we'll go back to city council. Right. So, so Randy, are you saying that you'd like us to put more yeah. effort into it before we take the next step? Would you accept the logic that this is the would you accept the logic that we will on the next round when it's more problematic but that these are pretty much clear no I understand, right. I understand your issue is to avoid a lot of other meetings if we get it right the first time before we send it out. Mm, that's not really the main consideration. What, what is Well, I mean, there's some, it seems to me there were things that I thought were problematical, like the Holly Street thing. I wasn't quite, I thought, just sort of thought it was not. We're not sure about the buildings around the church and stuff like that. And then I don't, the, uh, the Holly Street thing, which is not really contiguous with the central business district, particularly. Con Street, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's the, yeah. the thing about I mean, Con Street, I though. I wouldn't want to vote for the whole thing. Well, the thing about Con Street, we've been talking about trying to move central business somehow down Con Street and Pleasant Street for a yeah, while. Yeah, I've always been pretty much against it. Oh, I, I did not know that. <laughs> I think it makes sense myself. But. Well, so I, I think it makes sense in the context of what's being proposed. Initially, yeah. the proposal was more, was had a little long. pushback, and so now we're going to the easy part that 
to me, it makes sense where those buildings. They're already buildings. Right. Yeah. I think it makes sense. However, I wouldn't mind taking a little bit more time, like driving around and really looking at it. Well, so the timeline will be if we vote for it, it'll go to city council. I can't imagine it's going to get referred back to us until after the new city council. We're talking what? Right. We're we'll going to city council in January. January. We'll refer it out and probably do a public hearing in February. We'll do a public hearing in February if the timing all works out with the new. Right, right. Um, so you have to February if you, if you want you have to February to do the research. It's more a matter to get down that process. Right. So as we can use really more, you know, putting it, pushing it back. Further. But isn't the practical effect of our say we go into this and move it forward, the practical effect is that that sort of becomes the proposal. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I, I'm strictly, I mean, I, you obviously need more time. It's strictly, you guys talked about this in September and liked it. We did outreach and got two neighborhood meetings involved. So it seems like we've done all the things you're asking. But I haven't seen anything from the other That's what just been that. Well, he so, changed. The, so yeah. some of the maps have changed since those meetings. Based so the, on those the area of Holly Street, he shortened. The area in Con Street, they shortened based on the feedback from those meetings. Oh, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Did you go to one of those meetings? Well, no, and I don't want to have to go to that kind of meeting. <laughs> well, we're going to have what one no matter what. what. So we're going to. So I guess, I mean, so the, I guess the idea. <laughs> or do you want us to do what, another public meeting before this goes to City Council? No, 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 it's not. No, I just want to. I think. Oh yeah. Couldn't Even if I hand got to this, couldn't we do that before February? Now? You can drive all over the place and look at those places. Okay. It doesn't mean that this is passing concrete. It does mean that we just established that. It sort of becomes a proposal. You can't you can't expand it, but you can always pull it back. So it comes to the district and there's a lot of opposition on one property, you can pull back the boundaries. Mm -hmm. Well, from what I heard is the meeting is that it's what you've done that last round of this to pull back whenever somebody had a serious complaint. At least, you know, it's not the way that you jump people turning out for anything, but we at least wrote to every single property owner within this distance, within this area. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm comfortable, I, mean, I went to one of the meetings, and, um, um, and granted, there were there are only a few people there from the public. I didn't go to the one at Bridge. The first one was at Bridge Street. Oh, the first one was at Council Chambers. Right, we had more yeah. people. It's still I went to the one at JFK. There were quite a lot of people. Yeah, I went yeah. to the one at JFK. But um, I'm fine with kicking this off to start the discussion because this is going to go. I mean, City Council, you know, they're going to have their own shot at changing this thing when Wayne does a proposal anyway. So well, I'm in favor of making the, the whole zoning, sort of cleaning it all up so there aren't so many little patchy pieces and that, so fragmented. It seems like this is an effort to make these parts of the city more um, sort of congruent with each other, which I think is a good idea. I agree. I mean, I thought conceptually, we, conceptually, it was a good idea. Yeah. We got the initial plan and said conceptually we're we're good with this. We had neighborhood feedback. We tweaked it based on that feedback. And altogether, I think it's a good representation of what we want it to look like, and it's enough to recommend it to at least start the conversation in a formal way. Right, that and, you know, taking leads off the table because we didn't get any right. feedback right. from that. Right. I think that was, you know, that makes sense. So. I mean, the problem with the, the whole zoning ordinance is that it is very fragmented. And so this is an effort to... Thank you, Dr. So yeah, that's like all the Northampton general business. <laughs> Central business. All right, well, let's, uh, let's do a vote. We've already had a motion and a second discussion. Um, all in favor for pushing this forward to City Council? All opposed? Two. Uh, i got to do the math. 62. Um, so we're going to move down to Council Chambers and resume at 8 o'clock. We have to officially adjourn or can we just yeah. take our... Uh, major special permit with site plan for Cumberland Farms. 100 Main Street, Florence, map ID 23A-67 and 68. Um, just so for the planning board uh, to know, the ZBA had the hearing before us, um, also on the same property. The ZBA continued their hearing. Um, the applicant needs uh, an approval from both boards in order to proceed, though our vote is completely um, separate from the ZBA. <coughs> 
So um, if we decided, for example, to vote yes, the ZBA voted no, the plan should not go forward, and the same with the other way around. So they need uh, approval from both boards. Um, <clears throat> there's no stormwater permit required for this a small area. So there are conditions that the DPW uh, had issued, uh, and we can go over those after the applicants had the chance to uh, speak. Um, so we'll hear from the applicant and the board. We'll have questions for the applicant, and then we'll hear from the public. So if someone from the applicant would like to make the presentation. I am I'm Peter McConnell. I'm an attorney with Bacon Wilson and Amherst. I represent Cumberland Farms here this evening. Um, I know you all have received a pretty complete packet of information, but what I'd like to do is um, give you a little bit more, basically, pictures and some uh, arguments so, um, so that I don't need to touch on each criteria, the special permit, each criteria of the uh, site plan review. I've got written responses in there to. Uh, to do that. Is there enough? Yeah, one more short. You want more time? Yeah. Uh, we're lucky. We'll share. Uh, if you could share for now, that would be great. Um, as I said, I represent Cumberland Farms this evening. With us this evening is uh, Jim Heffernan, who is an associate in our office, a lawyer. Um, Paul Wilson, who is the uh, project manager for Cumberland Farms, is here. David Kelly, the project engineer from Cor the Core States Group. Uh, Steve Severi, the traffic engineer. And Blaine Appleby, the area sales manager for Cumberland. They're here to be able to answer questions on the parts of the project that they, that they prepare. Um, I'm going to keep this presentation pretty short because I know a lot of it is we've looked at a lot of it. I don't want to reiterate too much. Uh, so it'll be pretty short and then hopefully we'll have some give and take and some discussion. Okay, just remember this, so this board did not hear your presentation. I understand. I understand. But you have received a lot of information from planning. Right. Um, so the project before you tonight, as you said, is a site plan approval of a major project, and it is a major project because it serves gasoline. Um, a, there is a special permit to allow two curb cuts, and there is a special permit required to dispense gasoline. The convenience store itself is allowed as a matter of right with site plan approval. So those are the three issues before you this evening. Um, and the site that we're discussing is the southeast corner of Main Street and Maple Street in Florence. It's before you on the screen as it sits today. Um, the parcel of land is approximately 26,849 square feet of land. It does include the house to the left at the bottom of the screen that you see. Um, and it includes the mobile station that's operated there for some 40 years or so. Um, the site is zoned general business, and the mobile station is currently closed, but uh, that was the, is the current use uh, of the site. Um, the, basically, the project before you is, um, let me show you a few more views of the site. This is from Main Street, um, direct on. Um, this is from Maple Street, looking over towards the Florence Savings Bank. And this view is from near the intersection, looking back at the uh, service station and snack shop. The Cumberland Farms would propose uh, a building similar to this. Uh, this is a 3,600-square-foot uh, building. It is um, has clabbered siding, some stone siding. Um, and it, the elevations of it are as follows. The bottom one is the front elevation that faces Main Street. The top one is the west elevation that faces Maple Street. The top one here is the east elevation facing down towards the Florence Savings Bank. And the bottom, of course, is the rear elevation that faces back towards the fire station. This is what the site proposal is. And basically, the proposal is for the store to be at the back of the property. 
and the pumps and the canopy to be up near Main Street. There are three pumps which will have six dispensers. They dispense out of each side, but there are three pumps. Um, <clears throat> the site layout has two entrances, one right here that is 24 feet wide off of Main Street, and one here that is 24 feet wide off of Maple Street. As a part of this project, if it were approved, Cumberland Farms would be closing the three other curb cuts that service the property now. Um, there's one approximately here, there's another one in here somewhere, and then there's one for the house back here. So they will be closing three of the five curb cuts that service the property. Also as a part of the project, Cumberland Farms would be constructing an elevated sidewalk commencing here and going back to the front of the store, would then cross into the store and another elevated sidewalk here. They're also enhancing the crossings. They're currently, the, the curb cuts are serviced with curbing. These will be ramped down, cross, and back up. And we'll have appropriate signage for stopping and other directional information. So we believe that the site really enhances the pedestrian access to the site, both on the municipal sidewalk, which will be improved, and on the internal sidewalk. So we've taken great care to try to separate the pedestrians, bicyclists, from any traffic on the site. Um, <clears throat> The uh, open space is being enhanced in that there is currently 17% of the site is open. That is being increased to 26%, a 9% increase in open space, and basically most of it is here. There is, right now, there's just a little piece of greenery right here on the, on the existing building. Um, so the open space is increasing by 9%, and the landscaping is being enhanced. Um, the, the landscaping plan shows, and you can read on your plan what each one of the, uh, the plants are, but it, the landscaping has been enhanced dramatically to provide some buffer between the road and the, what's going on inside the site. Um, the current site is pretty much serviced with sheet drainage off the site into the city storm system. Um, the, the completely new stormwater management system that would be installed, it's been reviewed by the city DPW, and they have given you their comments. Their comments have asked for some minor changes, which of course we'll do, um, but basically they have accepted that project. Um, <clears throat> The uh, signs that are proposed are a monument sign uh, similar to this. A, it meets the uh, city's bylaw and it is, um, will be placed up near the current monument sign. Um, the, uh, the store sign is I guess I have to go back to the store sign is this. I believe it is 27 square. The lettering and the symbol are 27 square feet, well within the wall sign allowed by the city. Um, and then there are the two small side wall signs, 12 and a half square feet each, one right here and one right there. So Basically, that is what the uh, proponent is proposing to be built here. Um, we believe that what this brings to the center of Florence is over and above what is there now or what might be there is improved aesthetics. Clearly, the building is a better looking building than what is there now. It brings a greater pedestrian safety in that the curb cuts are reduced by three and greater vehicle, vehicle uh, safety in that the curb cuts are <coughs> reduced. Um, it also increases the open space on the site by 
and has enhanced landscaping, which will improve the looks of the pro project. The, I think one of the biggest assets of the site is the improved uh, sidewalk network within the site. Um, by elevating the sidewalks and allowing direct access from each city sidewalk, which they will also be enhanced, but direct access to the store through a continuous sidewalk, I think greatly enhances the pedestrian safety, enhances the pedestrian friendliness of the store, and really as a safety matter separates the pedestrians from the traffic that will be coming there for the purpose of uh, purchasing gasoline. Um, the stormwater management is certainly a vast improvement over what's been going into the city storm sewers. A lot of it is being captured on site and dealt with on site pursuant to your bylaws. There is greatly enhanced uh, tank safety in that obviously the tanks that are there now will be removed and state of the art safer tanks will be installed. And the, the last of the improvements really is the lighting. All of the outdoor lighting is proposed to be LED, which is uh, one of the goals of the city is to reduce the energy use. These lights are the most conservative <coughs> and uh, cost effective and energy effective lights uh, available. So they, all of the exterior lights will be LED, which is in sustainable Northampton is one of the goals of the city. So overall, I think that the um, Cumberland Farms convenience store will redevelop a uh, tough corner, or a corner that's been tough for a while. It will improve the aesthetics, the health, health safety, and needs of the neighborhood. So I do believe that this would be a benefit to Florence. One of the issues that um, we have discussed for a good number of months with the planning department is the issue of parking between the street frontage and the building. And as uh, Mr. Gilson mentioned, we have been before the Zoning Board of Appeals, and we have been before them to ask them for a finding that moving the parking from the side um, which is right here, there is parking between the building now and Main Street, and moving that to here in front of the new building, we've asked them to determine that that movement of the parking will not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the parking that exists now. And Chapter 40A, Section 6 of the state law says that the board, Zoning Board of Appeals may make a finding that it is not substantially more detrimental to do that. Um, they have elected to continue that meeting to look at some case law, um, so we are not yet permitted from them to do it. And as Mr. Gilson said, um, you make your decision independent of that if you elected to do so. But the reason that we needed to ask for that was that we are proposing to have parking between the building right here and Main Street. Um, and I know that's an issue with the city, it's a, an issue with, with uh, the planning department. So I'd like to speak directly to the reasons that we believe this is a better plan, a plan that works better for the city and a plan that works better for Cumberland Farms. And the first reason is vision. Um, the state fire regulations require that whenever a gas pump is in use, that the clerk at the console have control of that pump and vision of the refueling operation that's taken on. So the clerk has to be able to see what's going on out there and control the pump. So we have to have the windows and the clerk looking at the canopy and the pumps. So one reason is our own operation of the pumps that we have to look out onto where the refueling is taking place. Um, the second is that those who come to the pumps 
need to be able to um, access the store. And so the store front is here, and those who come to the pumps can go to the store. If the store were along the road and the pumps in back, and the storefront in front, then one who fuels would have to come out onto the front to come in. It's unacceptable to the retailer to have two doors, one in the front and one in the back, because then they can't monitor what's going on in the store. The clerk can't monitor the pumps, the front door, and the back door behind him or her. Um, so it's really, a, for Cumberland Farms, it's a vision issue that they have to look at the pumps, and they have to also monitor what's going on inside the store. Um, the second reason we believe is nighttime safety. Um, if the store is up on the street, right on the on the on Main Street, and the pumps and the parking are behind it, the vision for nighttime safety is not great. Passerbys on Main Street can't really see what's back there. Um, Public servants, police, fire can't really see what's back there as they drive by. So we believe that having the building blocking the pumps um, is, raises some safety issues, especially in the evening. Um, and the third is we think that this internal sidewalk system works the best. And if the building is here and the pumps are there, we, can't, we have to get in the people across the travel lane here and into the store becomes problematic. We also believe that this is much more pedestrian friendly for a pedestrian to be able to come down the sidewalk, look, see the store, see in the store, um, makes a lot more sense. So we think it's a more pedestrian friendly setup than having the back of our building facing Main Street. Uh, and the third reason, or the fourth reason, really, is simply aesthetic. Yes, we can try to do some things with the back of the building to make it um, more pleasing, but if that's the back of the building that is facing Main Street, within a few feet of Main Street, we have issues with where do we put our cooling and heating and cooling devices, which are all up here, where do we put our CO2 tank, where do we put our gas meters, and all of those things, because it wouldn't be a service to the city to have all of those right up on, on uh, Main Street. So we believe that for the city of Northampton and for Cumberland Farms, this is the best design to enhance pedestrian safety, to enhance the viability of the site, how it works, how it flows, and to provide the safety that's necessary and the uh, basic flow that's necessary. The second issue that I'd like to discuss a little bit is the lighting plan. Um, we have worked on it since we first submitted it. it is a, we have a new one in your packet. Tonight is, is different than the first one that was provided. It still does not meet the, the suggested standards of the city. Um, we strongly feel that under the canopy, uh, a maximum of five foot candles is not enough for the uh, customer to operate and to see uh, what he or she needs to be doing. Um, overall, your, um, one of your standards says that the overall uh, foot candles sh average should not exceed two. I believe we're at 2.11. So we are close, but we have not met it. The one that we're really having difficulty with is the maximum foot candles. The maximum allowed are five, and we have significantly more than that under the canopy. The purpose of your bylaw is to prevent glare and to prevent light trespass, all taking into consideration the convenience and safety of the citizens who might frequent the site. So we have produced what we think is a light plan that works, both for the customer who comes to the station and also the passerby who is going to see the light. We have done everything in your bylaw for the, for the deflectors, for the shades, for the downcasting. 
but we are asking that you consider um, allowing some flexibility on the lighting plan. We've been around and looked at some other um, facilities, none of which have any um, precedent necessarily with you, um, but some of them are more, some of the gas station service stores we surveyed are more than what we're asking for. And your latest one, um, I think, is Raceway, um, is, is less than what we're proposing. So we believe this is a good plan. We believe it complies with your bylaw. We believe it complies with all of the ordinances of the city of Northampton, except for the finding for the parking between the street and the building and the uh, lighting plan. So that's an overview, and I'd like to answer whatever questions you have, and uh, see where we go. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Your lighting levels here compared to your service station we have, you're higher or lower? Which service station? Were you saying the race compared to these? Is that? So the race with the, the one? Yeah. I believe we're high. Our, our maximum is higher. Okay. I, I don't know the, um, the average there. We simply took a reading under the, in a few places, under the uh, canopy. Our canopy is more than theirs. It's less than pride, um, probably about or a little more than, I think a little more than that. Do you have, um, I don't see the lighting plan, I, mean, I see an exterior lighting plan, but I don't see the detailed lighting plan that shows. The detailed lighting plan is in your big packet. Oh, I think so we had an updated one in here first. No, that packet is updated from what we first when we first came in. Oh, so so this one is the new that one is correct. I I have it on the screen, but frankly you can't you won't be able to read it on the screen. So that is where that is the plan of where the lights no, are. What I'm talking about is one that shows the foot candles right. throughout the site. Yeah, I took it out because I think it uh, it's in the, your paper packet. How, can you just say how high the elevation, when you talk about an elevated sidewalk, how, how high an elevation is Six, six inches. Oh. It's like a, a curving, it's a curve in it. So the, the reason for that is that uh, painted ones don't work real well. You know, cars uh, ignore them. But, uh, just sorry, back to length. The only sheet I have for length is L1.1. Correct. Which does not show the foot candles throughout the site. It's the sheet before the architectural drawings. What sheet number on? Which sheet number? Uh, it's it's uh, LSI Industrial. L0 dash, you know, that's the number, right before A1. Before A1.1 is the light bulb. Right? So you're saying this is the current what we have on this page is current. Correct. And then in the booklet I gave you is the lighting consultant's uh, explanation. Right. So this is the one that, that has the 28s and the 32s and the right. That's the correct. correct. And we had a uh, quite a number of discussions with planning and trying to bring it in. We've improved it some, but I did ask uh, that we have the opportunity to come and make the argument that it is shielded by the canopy, it's shielded by the down. Uh, so as far as light pollution going up, it will not. Um, we believe that that plan is the safest and the best for the customer. Um, questions from the board? Are there any bike racks? Yes, the, there is a bike rack to the right of the building. Um, uh, six. Um, see, right to the right of the building on this picture, and there are six. Andrew, well, I remember when we did Raceway? Yeah. Uh, or whatever it's called. Yeah. Uh, there was the same controversy about it. And you, you made them turn your lights down a lot. I'd be interested to know what exactly what we 
Oh, well, just let me get my piece before you guys all raise your hand. We're all going to get a chance. Thank you, Mr. McConnell. Uh, so uh, we're going to open up to public comment. Uh, public comment, uh, for those of you who haven't been to the play board meeting before, I'd like the city council or city school committee where you address the, the board and you don't get a response when possible. Uh, the planning board, or in some cases the applicant, we will try to res respond if we can to, to your concerns. Um, I will say, I, you know, I, I will try to limit, there's a lot of people here who want to speak, I will try to limit you to three minutes, so uh, I'm not going to be too strict on it unless you go way over. Um, the other thing to do is please try not to repeat uh, something or somebody else said. Uh, that would be great. Um, all right, Bill, you had your hand up first. Sorry, Mr. Bill, you're going to be next. PC's going to trump me anyway, it doesn't matter. It's, it's, uh, I'm Bill Dwyer, I live at 39 Myrtle Street, and uh, I'd like to actually speak to uh, an issue that came up actually during the ZBA meeting where I had asked a question about the, uh, the regulation that uh, Mr. McConnell cited, which, was, which actually drives this whole project, which is why the argument that the building cannot be built up to the street is because of sight lines for the gas pumps. Well, and he was kind enough to actually provide us with a regulation. The regulation actually stipulates, yes, you do have to have a site of the pump, but not through a window. You don't have to have it through a window. And in fact, actually, over a 1,000 square feet, there has to be a dedicated attendant, not just the clerk. The clerk in a 3,000 square foot system, according to these regulations, there has to be a dedicated pump attendant monitoring the pumps and the transactions and the gas. And that can be done with video monitors. It doesn't require moving and jiggering the building and requiring parking in any specific way. That building can go right up to the curb with the entrance being facing the street. The parking and the gas station can go in the back. Now as to the safety issues, which, um, you know, the concern about visibility for emergency systems to see the, the goings on, the fire station's behind there. It, if, if anything goes wrong, they're going to be, have the fastest response of anyone in the city for any <laughs> particular emergency, and it's not going to be, and in fact, if it went on in the front of the building, it would be obscured from the fire station, and of course, it'd have to rely on the old standby of dialing 911. But the, the so it's, it's a little disingenuous to suggest that this whole system is being based on that one very important assumption that they need the clerk who's doing the transacting and selling the lottery tickets and selling the cigarettes and, and all the, and the milk and everything else also has to be able to have a visible sight line to the pump. That's actually in violation of the regulations because that, with a system this size, they can't have the clerk doing that. They have to have an attendant, at least according to these state regs that were provided by Mr. McConnell. Kind of. So, I mean, I think as you deliberate this and kind of consider where this is situated in the lot, I understand the impetus, I think the principal impetus, although it's not really fair for me to make this conjecture, but the principal impetus is to do what most retailers want to do, is have show the gas station in the front as a display, show the parking in front as a display, and then also retain as much display wall, interior display wall as you possibly can. They'll be allowed to do that part, but they won't be allowed to I mean, if the building's required to be built up front, not to show off that it's a gas station principally for people driving down Route 9 who will be seeing it for the very first time in their lives. Otherwise, everyone else in the community certainly knows that there's a gas station back there. The other issues I wanted to speak to quickly was that a number of residents were here for the ZBA meeting, not aware that there were, this was going to be continued on to the planning board, um, who commented, most of them all within a block or two, talking about um, and, and I think Lucy Longstrap will speak to the to, uh, pedestrian traffic and such, so I won't be redundant there. But Councilor Jean Tacey also spoke about the concerns about the volume of, of residential and community pedestrian traffic in the area that clearly will be, will experience a difference. Whether it's dangerous or not, that's up to others to decide. But there's also the issue of the sight line is not just for the media, the butters, the people who live on Hillside Avenue, it's called that because it's on a hill that looks down on to this very site. And the light <coughs> issues are really of critical importance. This will be the brightest object in the center of Florence. It will be a bright, shiny bug light, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to attract people to draw to it. I don't argue that. 
the fact remains is that the Campbell footprints that you're talking about, are they, I mean, your obligation, of course, is to determine not what's good for their enterprise or business, but what's good for the abutters and the, and the community of the neighborhood. And then, so I will step back and get out of the way of Michael Pill, because I've already heard his rap, and this is, this is going to hurt. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, Mr. Phil, I've been in front of this board before. And, and, um, you don't want the three-hour treatise? <laughs> well, no, the one thing to remember, we're not a court, so if you, the, 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 uh, you can remind us of the chapters and verses of the law, but none of us are judges, one of us may be a lawyer, two of us, one of us. Maybe is a question. <laughs> but um, the rest do honest work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that's because that's just all. Okay. I do want you to have the citation for the regulation he just mentioned. It's Title 527 CMR Code of Mass Regulations 5.08. And uh, Attorney Silver on the ZBA was kind enough to point out that I believe the relevant subsection is subsection F. Okay. And and that's an absolutely fundamental point. It destroys the foundation of what's been presented to you, okay? Um, but what I also want to address, and Ms. Longshore will address it, is I, my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that the traffic study deals with vehicles but completely ignores pedestrian traffic. And she and some of the other neighbors can describe to you from their first-hand experience the intensity of the pedestrian traffic in this area. And I respectfully submit that to want to put this volume of traffic, 24 hours, with no consideration for the pedestrian traffic, and one of the things I learned was that apparently a lot of that pedestrian tra traffic is school kids from JFK, that is a glaring hole that needs to be addressed. The other thing is, I would love to get my hands on that packet that's been handed to you, okay? I need time to see what's in it and to respond to it. In Mark Bobrowski's Handbook of Land Use and Planning Law, he specifically says, when the applicant provides new stuff at the hearing, neighbors should, and I am doing that now, specifically request that the hearing can be continued you know, I am making a verbal public records request. I'll gladly pay for color copies, but I need that so that I can go through it and be prepared to respond to it. And indeed, the point of a public hearing is so folks in my position can know what's going on. And by the way, my compliments to Mr. Fiden because Northampton's the only place I know where as much is put online as is put online by the city. And I've been through all that, and it's now a gaping hole that I can't do that and it's legally due process, it's also what I would call fundamental fairness that we need the opportunity to go over that and possibly even have our own experts look at it. If nothing else, the citizens are entitled to respond to it, okay? Um, beyond that, uh, I believe it or not, I am going to sit down, be quiet, and let the neighbors speak because they can give you the first-hand facts that I think make it clear why this project simply doesn't fit on this site. As one of them pointed out, it's a highway business in a general business district. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, and again, uh, just state your name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. I represent, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot. And uh, Attorney Silver asked me that too. I'm here on behalf of Steve Shea, who's the trustee of the Timothy Shea Trust, and they own two properties that are abutting this site. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Hi. Since everyone has said I'm going to speak, I'm going to speak. You are. My name is Lucy Longstreth. I reside at 84 North Main Street in Florence, and I've lived in Florence for approximately 26 years of my life. I'm not going to tell you how long I've lived. I will refer to myself as a reformed attorney. I am licensed to practice in two states, but currently I'm a school teacher. I teach at JFK. And it's because of that that I'm here. I live in Florence. I work in Florence. I pretty much don't ever come downtown. Not any offense meant to the downtown area. I go through this intersection about 10 times a day. So do my students. And that's what I really want to bring to your attention. I did this at the zoning board as well. 
On any given day, the JFK gets out for a half a day or a vacation. Pretty much most of its population that lives in the area goes pouring through that intersection where Maple Street and Main Street intersect. The kids walk from the school, they come down Oak Street, they come near my house, they come down through that intersection, they head to Friendlies, they head to Birds, maybe come east, wherever, and they cross that very intersection. It is an extremely dangerous intersection. Why? Because it's the main way that people from the hill towns have access to downtown, to often Route 91 because they don't choose to go Bridge Road because it backs up at Jackson Street. I think a lot of you are aware of that. So because I've lived on that street for years, I hear the rush hour traffic. It starts at 7. It doesn't start at 8.30 because it's mostly people working at Cooley Dick. It's people who are working at local companies. Um, it's people who work in public safety. And they work early hours. They get out early, too. Rush hour in the afternoon starts about 2.30, and that's when the kids are there. So you've got heavy traffic and a huge <coughs> pedestrian population. The post office is at the opposite corner. People, I've seen elderly people crossing from the elderly home, and I can't remember what it's called, on Ma North South Maple Street, to go to the post office very slowly with canes, with walkers, with wheelchairs. We have... Um, residential housing that is housed with uh, people from ServiceNet, many of whom are disabled, crossing that intersection. Just trying to give you a, a feel for it because I live in it every day. We have um, people going to the Cup and Top, which is a toddler friendly restaurant, so lots of little kids crossing that intersection. Um, and then we have our Florence parades, the Halloween parade, the Christmas parade, and various other ones, Memorial Day Parade, where that street is shut down. It's so dangerous to have traffic going through there. And police officers are set at either end until the parades are over. Florence is a pedestrian town. I know we're part of Northampton, but we walk. We walk everywhere, every day. We walk to the hardware store or the post office. Kids walk. If any of you were to go there on December 22nd this year, at 2.30 and hang out for a little while, you're going to be mulled over by a bunch of middle schoolers. I guarantee it. Um, usually a police officer these days is positioned in that vacant lot to make sure that they're safe or that the rest of us are safe. <laughs> I just bring this to your attention not because I'm anti-business or anti-development. I'm not. We need taxes in this community. I, my taxes just went up. <laughs> Um, I welcome the right business. Maybe this is the right business. I don't know. But I want to bring to your attention the safety issues about the huge amount of pedestrian traffic going through. And that's it. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Well, my name is Jody Nicholas. I live at 28 Keys Street, which is close to where they're proposing the store. And I don't believe that we should make special, uh, give them a special permit for what they're trying to do because this is the one spot in Florence that these permits were probably made for. I just don't believe that um, in a space that special in town that we should be letting them have extra lighting and have a building that's set back from the street to allow the parking. It's going to be open 24 hours a day, which means there are so many people that live in that area, they'll be hearing car doors all the time. And this, this isn't, in my eyes, a business that's for the common good. It's not a library or maybe even part of the hospital where I feel like I would allow a special permit to go through. I feel like it's just not the right business, especially seeing they're already right down the street. So I'm fine with that business, but them moving, it doesn't seem like it's doing the public any good. It's maybe just doing them good. So that's what I believe. Thank you. Uh, hi, 
My name is Alana Aubrey. I live at 63 Maple Leaf. Sorry, Aubrey. I live just on the other side of the fire station, so I'm very familiar with that um, area. And I guess one question quickly I had has to do with the blue house that's there. Is that to be knocked down as part of this project? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to um, ask that. But the current um, Cumberland Farms, and I don't know, is that also open 24 hours a day as well? Yes, it is. It is. Okay. So one of the um, pieces that uh, nobody has mentioned is the Silk City Tavern being right across the street and uh, the flow, overflow of people coming from the bar at, you know, whatever time it closes, two in the morning, crossing the street to a typically very quiet, very, very quiet corner. I live right by the firehouse. I know all the sounds that come from the firehouse. I know exactly when they're on a call, when they're backing into the parking lot. Um, there is very little space between where I live and that corner. And should that house get knocked down, there's to be a parking lot and very little, you know, the bay where the fire um, trucks come in. And then there's barely a fence in my front lawn. So what I anticipate seeing is um, lots of lighting. Um, the where the location of the two entrances are. Um, I would agree wholeheartedly with the one on Maple Street um, being ripe for lots and lots of accidents, not to mention increasing uh, a huge amount of traffic onto Maple Street as opposed to staying on Route 9. There is something to be said about that side of Maple um, that feels very different than the other side of Maple. Once you cross Main Street, there's just a, a different sense of what happens. The business on that side of the street differs considerably from birds. Um, it's a very, very quiet strip of, of Maple. Um, and to move the Cumberland Farms and the clientele, I buy gas at Cumberland Farms. I'm not you know, suggesting other, anything other than that. but. 24-hour accessibility, the parking lot area around the building, I would have a lot of safety concerns because there are several parking lots that abut that entire area. Um, I also know people who work in that building are very concerned about the overflow of um, pedestrian traffic as well as car traffic. So um, I just would have a lot of concerns about the increase of um, populations at 2, 3, 4, 5 in the morning. Um, and I would worry about safety considerably. So, thank you. Thank you. My name is Alex Johnson, and I live on uh, 28 Key Street. And uh, I guess my concerns, my, uh, my objections to the proposed plan is part emotional and part aesthetic. Florence is a beautiful village in a beautiful area. And uh, there's been a lot of paintings painted of the area. Uh, one of the the uh, Florence Diner. Um, <coughs> I don't know if there's going to be a painting made of the proposed place that we have on the board there. I'd love to see it if it was ever done. But um, I went to Cumberland Farms just the other night. It was late. I needed half and half for my coffee, and it was great that it was there. And it is there. It's already there. And um, the space next to it is vacant. It's been vacant for a while. I don't know if there's been any thought put into using that spot, expanding it. There wouldn't be much need for the construction crews to go too far from where they are, already have a store. Um, it's also nice to know that Florence closes, for the most part, at a certain point in the day. Two o'clock maybe is last call at Silk City. It's pretty late. Um, I hear the overflow too. I've had, I have my issues. I call authorities every once in a while. It's not so bad in the winter with the windows closed, but in the summertime it's atrocious. Uh, but it is nice to know that for the most part, this, the, the little village closes down after two o'clock in the morning, and um, this would sort of be like the uh, the noisy college roommate that stays up with his friends all night long uh, if there were, this were to be put where it's proposed to be put and. Uh, Emotionally, for me, that's, it's just going to hurt if it happens. And aesthetically, uh, I, can't think of a, I can't think of anything I'd rather not see in my town. Thanks. I'm John Gunther. I live on Meadow Street. I'm sorry, John, you left Gunther. I uh, live 27 Meadow Street. I, I think this is a really good example of a bad example. Um, 
I'm not so much against the business per se as the siting. It just seems like the old style we're trying to get away from, the strip mall feel to it. Um, it, it should indeed be rotated uh, 180 degrees. And then design for sitting that way. So you would have a sign in front hiding all the air conditioning and ductwork. And a front door, of course, you'd want it to come in from the street and make it easier for pedestrian traffic. Um, the parking on the side seems odd to me because that wasn't really used as parking. That was car storage for repair work. So it wasn't people coming in to get a sandwich. The, the mini mall aspect of it was very modest. It was really a repair garage. Uh, I'm interested in knowing, are there permits for 24-hour? <coughs> it was a concept I never had really thought about. No special permit. So any, any business could stay open in Florence 24 hours? Yeah, because noise issues have become stricter at night. Yeah, interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Great story. Okay. Uh, the planning board put restrictions on the hours of operation for stop and shop gas station. I believe they they have to close at night. Is that part of the special permit process? Or? So if it is a restriction that could yeah. be made by reasonable, you know, reasonable conditions to address. Okay, that's that wasn't clear. So I'm not sure where we're at. So the Franny invention was when the stop and shop put their gas station in the King Street. The planning board at the time put hourly restrictions on it, so it's not open 24 hours a day. Yeah, they, they can't open until 7, I believe. 7 in the morning. It's fairly convenient. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so you'll want to yeah, so in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robert Ross. I live in uh, downtown Florence on uh, 40 Kais Street. I've lived here for quite some time, and I know the Kaisers, and uh, it's properly pronounced Kais Street, not Key Street. Um, I'd like to apologize. I had to leave to go to Amherst and back, and I've lost my notes in the meantime. And what is the special permit for? Can somebody? There's a separate special permit than the finding <coughs> from the earlier meeting. Yeah, the ZBA is determining whether or not they're allowed to park in front of the street. The building. A special permit is required because it's a convenience store in a GB general business district. So the two separate which is not allowed by convenience store or gas station? Yeah, sorry, convenience store with a gas station. So which, no, but which is it? Is it the combination that's not allowed without a special permit or one or the other? It's the gas, it's a gas station with or without convenience commercial requires a special permit. Okay, so retail itself. It seems like we got a convoluted trail here. Um, because we, we asked for, they asked for, uh, for a, a further a continuance of a non-conforming non use, and then the use that they're asking for, the determination on making the non-conforming use larger and different, it's not an allowed use to begin with. It seems like this should be a large-scale project for, for review, and not part and parcel dot two, to two separate, separate boards. This, Feels like this should be all looked as one gigantic project, which it is, because it encompasses two parcels in downtown but, Florence. But there's also, you know, the DPW has to weigh in it. If this was near a wetland, the Conservation Commission would weigh in on it. I mean, there, there are reasons why there are different boards that handle different aspects of zoning, and we happen to be the planning board. The ZBA has a different purview. The Conscom has their purview. The historic district had to sign off on the knocking down of the blue house. So. It'd be nice if everybody came in one big meeting, but no. But aren't large-scale projects treat, treated differently? So this this is still a major project for site plan. So in essence, the boards have independent authorities. For them to go forward, they need to find it for the zoning board and the two special permits from the planning board and the site plan approval from the planning board. So even if the board, I remember when you came in, but even the board tonight voted on all the permits. If the zoning board didn't issue the permit, they couldn't go forward, and vice versa. If the board voted against the permits and zoning board approved it, they couldn't go So they need approval from both boards. Right. Similar to a project where the CONSCOM and the planning board both have to sign up. So who will have to make their, who will have to jump first? Sure. Can, you make, can you make your matter. determination with, without, without yeah. this? Well, okay. Back to, I was, the, I was the layman that made the term earlier that uh, this is a general, this is a uh, highway business being squeezed into a general business area where it really doesn't belong. And it's really disheartening that uh, Northampton has taken greater care in um, preserving how development has been done on King Street. 
where we were preserving walkways on, on what was the highway business zone. And here we are in downtown Florence in the center, a key area in downtown Florence, which is a walkable village. And this, this project just does not lend itself to this area in downtown Florence. Um, historic buildings that are, that are adjacent to this project. Um, they, you know, granted they've picked a building that might be more palatable. It's a cave style building, but it really isn't indicative of any of the buildings that are in this area. It's not going to really blend with the architecture that's there now. Um, there's no reason why the building couldn't be put further, off, further closer to the lot line and they could do something different, but they seem unwilling to do that except to insult our intelligence and tell us they're going to put the building backwards if they can't do it the way they want to do it. Um, so it's very disheartening. Um, but the things, the key things I would like to look at if the project does get approved is the lighting. It's nine times what that they propose, nine times what is allowed by our, our zoning. Uh, there's signage to be backlit. It would be much better if it wasn't backlit, if it was lit from the ground, so that it wasn't blowing throughout the village. I have problems with being a 24-hour location, especially in this location, uh, adjacent to uh, Silk City, which kind of is a disturbance at 2 o'clock at night with people still out on the street and uh, dispersing. But I think this will work as a beacon mm -hmm. for those people and we'll end up with uh, more uh, hangabouts and uh, loud noise in uh, downtown Florence at, at this time of night. I think, it, I think it's they, the two businesses together will cause problems. Uh, the other thing is I know they have slated is they have a uh, red box out front and if it's a 24-hour store and you want to sell videos or rent videos why can't you do them within the walls of your store? Why do you have to have yet another sign on the front of your building uh, selling videos? And if, if videos were, if, I mean, that obviously it's a calling. It's another thing to get people in the door. And frankly, as a business model, if you want to, if you want those customers to buy other things besides the videos, you'd like them to come into your store and not stand outside on the sidewalk and rent their videos. I mean, it's just another, another piece of light pollution that we'll have. Uh, there's no provision for snow storage on this plot. Um, I mean, they're going to be responsible for trucking their snow away. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any, any guidance put down for a timely manner for doing that. Uh, the lot that they have now is very constricted, and they have had large piles of snow there for a long period of time, including putting it on the sidewalk, pushing it towards the sidewalk, and breaking the one piece of greenery that they did have, which was a city tree on the sidewalk in front of their building. Um, these are all things to consider. I think this is a serious project and shouldn't be treated lightly. And there should be a lot of consideration before any permits are granted. Um, I think that, that these applicants were probably led down a path thinking that this was going to go through a lot more smoothly than, than you might expect. Um, we've worked hard for a long time in Florence to make it a, a real community, you know, where, where you can feel at home. I'm just curious about your last statement. The, the, the applicants were led down a path where they thought the approval. Well, I'm sorry, you weren't privy to the last hearing, but uh, their their attorney was talked like he's met with the DPW and met with the planning board, and everything was fine, and this was going to be fixed in this meeting, and that was going to be fixed in that meeting, and uh, so I, I just want you to know that that it's it's not what we brought in downtown Florence. Well, you know, just just so you know, an applicant. You know, we can get an applicant who wants to put a skyscraper there, but and they could the applicant can say anything they want, but they do have to go through the board. For, and oh, I understand. So you know, I'm familiar with the I'm familiar with the I don't think they've heard anything from this board that has made it look as if this is going to be an easy process for them. So I'm not. Um, that confused me. So I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. You couldn't have it either. Yeah. No, thing. I. I understand. Uh, there's no provision for bike. bike there's no bicycle rack on this project yeah. either. Yeah. There's 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 there. There. <coughs> Sorry. Thank you. Hi, this is South Main Street in Florence. Uh, I've lived there my whole life. Um, and it's just, you know, people have said the idea is this is a Florence of the village and this is this is the center of our village and it just doesn't belong. But something that hasn't been addressed is the idea of the truck traffic. You know. I know the trucks that need to go to a convenience store. 
kind of not to mention the gas trucks that are going to go in there, the truck delivering the cigarettes, the, the truck delivering, you know, six different bread trucks, 12 different, you know, potato chip trucks, and their grocery trucks, all trying to maneuver through that intersection with pedestrians trying to walk around. I don't think it's safe. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Uh, I'm sure. Oh, well, Mr. McConnell, is that you? Yeah. yeah. Oh. If I could just respond to a few of the comments. Um, the uh, as far as the comment regarding the uh, viewing the gas pumps, uh, Paul Wilson's been with Cumberland Farms for about nine and a half years, and he tells me that they have never been approved by a fire department to have a clerk walk by video. I don't want to say it can't happen. But basically, they have never been approved for that, and their policy is to watch it more carefully than that. So that's their their take on what needs to be done, and that's part, not all, but, and I don't want anybody to think that's all the reason that this plan is here. That's part of the reason is to view the pumps. Um, we agree there's pedestrians in the area. We agree that uh, at times there's a lot of them, and that's the reason that we took great care to um, see that we could close um, this curb cut, this curb cut, this, uh, we, we're reconfiguring one of these, but closing one of these and closing the one that enters the house. So yes, it, the proposal that we have before you tonight is a lot safer than what's there now. We're going to properly um, uh, repair the curb cut so that the uh, they meet the city's desires for where they do cross. We're going to put a, an elevated sidewalk all the way down here so the, the pedestrians who come along here can stay on a sidewalk, can come down here and go to the building without interacting with the pumps or the parking. Um, and the same on the other side. So I think that the I mean, people may be against the business being there, and that's fine, but I think to suggest that we haven't taken into consideration the number of pedestrians and trying to make it a lot safer for them, we certainly have. And that isn't just because that's what the city would like us to do, but it's because it's extremely important to a business that the people who come there are safe and, and interact well with the traffic. So we understand there's pedestrians there, we understand they're there now, we understand that they cross the intersection. But within our site and within the city um, sidewalk, I believe we've done what we can to make this pedestrian friendly and safe. Um, the the uh, as far as the uh, snow storage, um, the plans do deal with snow storage. We tell you what will happen. It, it will be stored on site and it will be removed within 24 hours. If there is not a spot on site, because we have a winter like last winter, it will be removed within 24 hours of the storm event, is what the plans provide for. Are you sure uh, where, on the, where are you going to store it? I do not, uh, no, I don't get it. C3. But it's on it, the, have you filled the actual area where it's being stored? No, but it is. The note is on C3. Oh, it's a Oh, so no, okay. And obviously, no location. Yeah. Yeah. we do not fill a location. No, right. Right. Uh, that's, 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 why, that's why I was wondering where you can store it on the site. It doesn't show on the plan. <laughs> it just says you're going to store it, but it doesn't yeah. say where. It's a business suit. It's just going to be stored at whatever location you have in the truck. Right. It's plowed up and stored, and if, it, if it's a little bit, it would sit in a corner. If it interferes with parking or traffic or pedestrian flow on the sidewalk, then it's Well, I guess the reason I'm curious is because the only place I see where you can store it <coughs> on your proposed plant is buffer, mm -hmm. which I don't think is where you want to, we would want to put it, or it's going to go in parking spaces, which I don't think is where you want to put it. Um, well, I don't think it's where the city would like us to put it either, but um, <coughs> if there is no place, depending on how much there is, it will be removed. If you want a specific site, we can uh, certainly amend the plan to designate that. Yeah, that would be something we'd like to see on the plan is where you're going to store this. So I believe that the, the project is pedestrian friendly and we've done what we can to protect the pedestrians who come onto the site and who actually, who pass by, who don't come onto the site, but who pass by by make, closing the curb cuts and making the crossings at the curb cuts properly signed and properly uh, 
taking out the, the actual curbs and making them sloped as the city prefers. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier was the obvious, I think it's obvious, but the Cumberland Farms store just down the street will be closed if this is permitted and <clears throat> it will be deed restricted that it will not be a convenience gas station. So it would be sold and would be used for some other purpose, but it would not be a convenience gas station. As far as this attracting a whole lot of traffic, we certainly hope that business is good. There's no question about that. But if you take a look at the traffic report, something, and Steve can comment on it if you'd wish, but the statistics show something around 65% of the traffic that comes to a Cumberland Farm store is going by anyway. It's passed by traffic who stops on their way to work for a cup of coffee, stops on their way to work for a newspaper or a sandwich, whatever. So these stores generally don't generate much traffic. Well, I, I mean, 35% is new traffic, so I mean, that's the flip side of that. Well, or, or existing, somehow existing. Yes, I mean, Frankly, we obviously wouldn't be building the store if it, we weren't hoping it would be service more customers than the other one. But part of it is to sell more product to the same customer also. But of all uses, very few people, according to the traffic engineers, get in their car and say, I'm going to go to Cumberland Farms. Now certainly, somebody who needs gas could very easily say, I need gas, I want to buy it at Cumberland Farms, I'll go out of my way to do that. And that would be part of that protection. So you brought up the traffic study. Um, it has a 1% growth rate in it. Is that common? That seemed, sh that seemed pretty shy from my experience. Yeah. I guess I can answer that. Steve Severi from Puffin on you. Hi. I'm the author of the, of the traffic impact report. And um, what, we, um, what we base those projections on for future growth are um, statistics that we get from, the, from MassDOT. Um, they have permanent count stations across, throughout the region that we can look over time and see how traffic uh, trends have changed. You know, there are factors that influence this increasing population, uh, workers, um, you know, uh, increasing population in the workplace, uh, increasing number ownership of vehicles. Those, those are all upward uh, uh, influences on, on vehicle miles traveled. Um, but a recent trend are for those things to be actually decreasing. Um, so when we actually look at that data, we see that if, if we were to uh, use those factors as they come out of the data, we would be projecting negative growth in, in traffic. So we, we, we tend to um, uh, err on the more conservative side where we, ha we assume some amount of growth even though the statistics indicate otherwise. So that's, the 1% is consistent what's being used industry-wide for this region at, at the moment. Um, and we've heard a lot of comment about pedestrian safety and the concern of the junior high. Um, your three-year history is showing no pedestrian accidents. Are Correct. You yeah. sure of that? That's in, 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 in the data. Did you, did you check any of our local records? We, we haven't checked local uh, police records, but, you know, the, uh, the data that we use comes from the... Uh, the registry motor vehicle, so that, that gets reported from the police departments to the registry. So, I mean, that's our standard um, way of uh, assessing safety. Uh, we'll turn it over. Um, any questions? Yeah. Uh, my question is, what exactly are we being asked to do? So three, three permits. The, um, Having more than one curb cut is special. Right. Curb cut. Um, yeah. The use itself, the gas station, with or without convenience, commercial, is because it's with. So the use, and then all the details of the use. But the location of the building, uh, the sort of design issues, is that up to the. No, you don't know that. I mean, the parking in front of the building, that's the zoning board's use. But, but the overall use, it, you, you look at the use in context. The use is as. The, for example, one of the criteria you should do when you go through everything is um, compliance with the city's master plan. That's one of the seven or eight criteria. So when you consider the use, you're going to consider the use as it's laid out here and consider does that mean the master plan. And that would include the, um, the, some of the aesthetic issues around having a building close to the, closer to the street. That's correct. Right. 
character to character. Right. We don't have any, any purview over, for example, building material. We can't say brick. No, the we, location of building. That we have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Mark, uh, Wayne, what's the wording relative to the village center and sustainable plan? Um, um, so the big goal that's, that's equivalent, it's relevant here is goal LU2, create and preserve high quality built environments in the downtown and village centers. And then it goes into a little more detail, but not a lot more detail. Um, you know, make sure that uh, downtown village centers be very accessible, but most is the goal. There's not a lot of guidance. Mm -hmm. But because it's in a sustainability plan, we can use that to guide us as to whether or not we approve a special Absolutely. permit. Right. Right. Current position, historically, for architecture, you know, buildings. That's not just the buildings, but the context. Of the so the special permit, I mean, back to Catherine's question, the special permit basically comes down to the question of does the use of that site fit with what we think should be there? That's really the criteria. And, and just to be clear, any use as presented here, so you could hypothetically say, no, you're turning this down as laid out here without having any prejudice against if they reverse the building under these theories. So you're saying the way it's shown here, not necessarily a service issue. Right. Procedurally, just because uh, what you mentioned, turn down without prejudice means they can come back. Straight turn down means they can't come back for two years. Can't come back to the same project anyway. So even if you just turned it down, they could come back to a really big different project. Nope. There's more sending a message saying, Mr. Uh, the fact that there has been a gas station here which has been shut down for I don't know how long, does that create uh, a kind of an expectation that this should be a gas station? Well, certainly gas station is grandpa. So the okay. gas station under mobile ownership or anybody else could come back any, you know, as long as they're actively marketing it, is grandpa could come, could come Okay. So and that's why they're at least eligible to ask for this. The parking front of the building wouldn't be permitted if this was a, a vacant site. Just because the service station's there, the zoning board could allow a parking in front of the building, and you all could allow it. So it gives them the opportunity to do this project, but not the right. Okay. And if I could, to be clear, I believe the gas station can open tomorrow as it, as it sits. That's correct. So it's two years unless, act, unless they've abandoned the use, as long as they're actively marketing it. How long has it been shut down? I don't think it's, if they're actively marketing, they don't need to bring it public. Sorry, Mr. Brown, do you have one more thing since somebody else comes to speak? Uh, yeah, what I wanted to do, because she raised the question, was in the, in the uh, packet that I gave you, I did set out the site plan criteria and how we met that, and the special permit criteria and how we believe we met that. You only showed some of them. Though. I showed the one, showed the ones that I thought were relevant to this okay. project. Um, you may feel others are, but I showed I did the ones that I thought were relevant. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm happy to discuss those if you want, or just draw your attention to them. But basically, the for the site plan, um, the purpose of site plan approval is to minimize adverse impacts of development to promote. To, Promote development which is harmonious with surrounding areas to assure drainage, safe access, safe and efficient vehicular and pedestrian movement, adequate parking and loading spaces, public convenience, safety, and adequate con consideration to a budding owner. And we believe we've done that. Um, we believe that the project definitely improves the safety, improves the drainage, the stormwater, improves the access, and improves the vehicular safety. I think that this project definitely does that. We've attempted to improve the landscaping to address one of the neighbor's um, thoughts, the one from behind on the other side of the fire station. I think having the store where it's proposed here shields her much better from the activities of the store than if we were to pull the building up and have the nothing between the pumps, the parking, and the fire station. But that's my opinion of, of how this will play out. Um, once again, we are providing increasing the open space. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, okay. Because other people want to speak. Yes. Well. Okay. And I, I just asked you to read um, tabs two and three.
Thank you. Yeah, I just want to clarify, I just want to reiterate what Wayne said is um, section three of what we're hand to today um, purports to lay out all the special permit criteria. It's missing several critical ones, so board members should refer to um, the staff report for the full criteria. Uh, the the, uh, the two points, one about the issue of nine previous projects that have not been approved by fire departments. I'm not sure how many of those actually presented plans saying we want to put the pumps I'm, in the I'm back. I'm sorry, that was in nine years. That nine years. Oh, sorry. in nine years. How many How many projects? Or I Actually, I'm not allowed to address you, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but it, it, that being said, I think what's more germane is whether a plan that does feature monitors as opposed to having to see through a window would be presented to our fire department and see what our fire department says. I think that's more relevant, whether it happened over nine years is not for me because the regulations simply specify that you have to be able to see it. And the other thing that was used as a point of persuasion was that the fact that the what will become an empty or derelict building system, uh, part of the comfort you're supposed to gather from that is that it will be um, it will be precluded by deed restriction from becoming another gas station or a convenience store, which is great on one hand, but if you think about it, it's, that is rendered a 21E site. It is, it is a, it's a tough property to flip for something else, and that means it would be pretty challenging for someone to think of an imaginative way to renew that system and turn it into if they can't turn it into a gas station, there's going to be little impetus to try and flip that property and turn it into something else because there's a lot of costs associated with that. And so, as such, the thing is, is we're not gaining anything. We're actually losing something and picking up, a, we're losing one derelict spot and giving up another. And the, and the reason this spot's so appealing, uh, principally to a place that sells gas, is because other people looked at it and it's a difficult project to develop because of the 21E issues, I'm guessing. I don't know that for a fact, but I'm guessing that's part of the impetus. So I think, think you know, if we're asked, if we're invited to consider that holistically, I wouldn't have invoked it otherwise, but that was as part of the point of persuasion. Then if we're, I think you should consider all the ramifications as far as that goes. And Florence, where the convenience store is located now, is definitely clearly more appropriate than, uh, than likely this, which is <coughs> literally, it is the epicenter. It's dead center. If you were to stick a pin in a map, it would go right in the middle of that lot when you try to identify the center of Florence. So, I mean, obviously, and I, I, I know for a fact that this, you're aware of that, and this is probably going to uh, inform your decision ultimately, but just laying out context. Uh, yeah, Mr. Rupp, I didn't know somebody else was over here. I don't know if I'm allowed to come up with that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, about the pedestrians being hit, I believe the pedestrians have been hit on their own sidewalk in front of their own store. I think there's a notable case locally, lately, or it's all here, Hill, somewhere locally, where a man lost his leg, and that's why they have large ballers in front of uh, Cumberland Farms stores throughout the area. Cars from crashing into that. It's because the man kills the chickpea also. Um, and I do want to ask you, it says that it's safer. That I know they've narrowed the curb cuts, which is great, but I can see where you enter from Maple Street that if somebody was parked at the pumps, it's actually, uh, on the Main Street, it's actually hard to get around that car. The way, the way it almost looks like you almost go under the canopy to enter, enter into the parking lot. Twenty feet total. Um, I am concerned about this being so close to the to the to the corner when it backs. Up. With, where, where does the traffic go when it backs up into the into the intersection coming into this uh, into this into this building? I don't know if fire department is signed off, but what you know what, what does? It's already difficult to take a left hand turn uh, both ways on Main Street. Sometimes it takes two traffic cycles to get through the because there's no left turn arrow. So with this there as a major attraction, I think it's going to change that dramatically. And I think that warrants some study. I know in other projects that we've put a burden on the 
applicant to improve an intersection that, that might be a problem, and this is something that should maybe be looked at. Whether there should be a turn arrow installed at that point if the project does go ahead. And my final question is, for the moment, if we're looking for three special permits and a finding, does it go with the master plan? It seems to be a long ways off. Um, I mean, if it's not, it's not a, it's not a by right project, so it really deserves a careful consideration. Good evening, Steve Shea. I'm Steve Shea, uh, successor trustee of Timothy E. Shea, Timothy e. Shea Trust, uh, which owns property adjoining on Maple Street and Main Street across from the proposed project. Uh, I wasn't going to speak at this meeting, but uh, I just have a few things. Um, I am concerned about the canopy lighting. I'm concerned about the 24 hours a day aspect because there are 10 apartments uh, as a member of the board brought up immediately across from this in the bird block uh, right at canopy level. Um, there are other apartment units, uh, actually condominium units in the former everybody's building across the street. There are, there are four units there. Well, only two of them face Main, Main Street. And there are um, other, I'm going to say, six housing units besides ServiceNet down North Main Street, just past Cup and Top, that will be impacted visually by the 24 hours aspect. Um, and, but most of all, I'm just concerned that it's going to turn the center intersection into a wasp nest of cars trying to enter and leave Main Street. As it is, it's very busy there during rush hour, during many times of the day. And as Councillor Chasey mentioned, I don't know if it was in this meeting or in a previous meeting, uh, even the current Cumberland Farm site uh, <coughs> further east on Main Street um, often presents a challenge when traveling down Main Street for cars trying to exit Main Street into Cumberland Farm and uh, exit Cumberland Farms on the Main Street. And adding those, uh, I don't know what you call them from a traffic engineering standpoint, when, when something enters or leaves the roadway, adding all those and putting them down in, to an already very busy intersection seems to be problematic to me. And um, that's it. <laughs> um, my final comment is uh, Cumberland Farms Corporation is proposing, I believe, it, is it 3,400 or 3,800? I can't see it. square feet in the store. Um, I don't know how many square feet they have in their existing site, but the adjoining vacant space, I'm going to say, adds another 12 to 1,500 square feet that they already have potentially available to them for their business if they want to expand in their existing site, um, which I believe would bring them close to 3,000 just at their current site. Um, that's from a more global perspective. And finally, um, the existing non-conforming use of the lot as a service station, which has been a service station for 40 years, I believe. Um, this may be a technicality, but it's not, it may be a parcel, but it's currently two different lots. And so uh, I believe the board has discretion on this, but when you take the base station, uh, which is the store for the service, uh, you have gas pumps outside, and then you have a store, and the store is where the where some of the transactions take place for the for the gas transactions. I believe that counts as a service station, and um, by expanding the retail site onto that second lot, uh, the Bucos house lot. Isn't that bringing in 
a second lot that doesn't fit with the existing non-conforming use as a service station. I don't know if that's the case. I'm just throwing that out there. Those are all of my thoughts. And just so you know, the, the whole the, the we don't rule on the existing non-conforming. That's the ZBA. Okay. So that won't be the part of our decision. Okay. That'll be part there. But Steve, that's just if I can just explain because he's my client. That's why the gas station is completely discretionary. And yes, it's true. Somebody could re open within the time limit the existing gas station, but that cuts absolutely no ice, it gives them no legal expectation and absolutely no legal right to have a special permit to completely demolish that building and erect a new gas station, not only on the one that the present occupies, but on additional land, and I'm assuming in a city as sophisticated as this, you're well aware not only is it their burden to meet all your criteria, they can meet all your criteria, and you still have a perfect legal right to exercise your discretion to say, in your judgment, this is not in the best interest of the community, and this gas station should not be put here. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to hear a little bit from the board. Um, you know, we've heard from the applicants, we've heard a lot of public comment. Um, there have been a number of issues raised. Um, some of which uh, the applicant will not be able to resolve tonight, um, not to mention uh, ours having the ability to, to read the, the folder that they gave us. Um, some of the things we've heard about, snow storage, um, the truck traffic, uh, light levels, um, the building setback, pedestrian safety, um, 24 hours, 24 hours uh, buffering for the neighbors, um, <coughs> So there's a number of issues just inherent to this, regardless of when we have a chance to, to review the, uh, what we've heard from the, the, the red binding that we've heard from the applicant. So um, I'd like to ask the board, how do we proceed? Do we proceed? Do we think, as because we know there are two special permits involved in this, there's a lot of criteria associated with us approving the special permit, number one of which is do we believe that the use proposed by the applicant is a fit for that site. Um, so, um, I'm curious what people think. Andrew? Um, frankly, I'm, I'm prepared to say that I don't believe it's a, it's a fit use for the site. And to vote on that tonight, and um, if the vote goes the way I think it should go, then I, that would draw a line under it. Um, I was going to say, I was at the technical re review when this was initially <coughs> presented, and it was presented in the context of against what exists now, or what used to exist. And in that context, I love it. This is it's great. You know, it's more pedestrian friendly, there's more green space, um, we're cutting curb cuts, and so forth. So, as compared to what's there, that's great. But then stepping back, and in the context of its use and where it is, in addition to the, the technical things like the lighting and the snow storage and the 24 hours and so forth, to me this looks like, it feels like, a, a much better version of the Pride Station on the corner of King and Damon Road. But this isn't the corner of King and Damon Road. This is downtown Florence Village Center. And to me, I, I can't get past that, and I'm, I can't vote for that. And I'm, as it's presented now. Um, let me understand that if we were voting for a service station to go in there now, I, I wouldn't, that, I would have clear reason to vote against that. So that's the sort well, of... service station, just gas station. Gas station. Mm -hmm. And so I regret that there is one there now. And, and I realize it could open tomorrow and become, you know, pumping gas station all over again. But I look at this as an opportunity not to do that in some ways, and, and that's that overwhelms all my other list here. I, you know, it does moving it from the location it currently is and closing that and making that a problem property to clean up and sell, uh, and putting it here where uh, the term that we're looking for is you're increasing the density of turning movements, you know, because you're turning in and out right near an intersection. Um, I think the lighting, you know, it. it, it it is a, a, a and so 
I'm not, I'm lined up with my, with my fellow parents because it is the very corner that we would like for something very different to happen. And so, you know, I, that's, this, is, this is what we do. We try to make things that we want to happen. Great. I think they've taken one of their standard plain vanilla plans and tried to shoehorn it into the form. Yeah, under the set of criteria of special permit, um, we're required to look at sustainability plan and this doesn't conform in my mind in any way with what's in the sustainability plan for the so. yeah. Totally agree. I uh, think it fits in with the master plan and uh, it, it, on that side. We voted against it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I mean, I. Uh, I, I know we just went through the rezoning of King Street. You couldn't even put the gas station the way it's proposed in King Street up mm -hmm. to the bike path. It would have to go past the bike path, past Stop and Shop, because it wouldn't even fit an entranceway on King Street. And if we can't make it something like this fit on King Street, I just can't see us putting it in the middle of Florence. So I'm afraid to vote against it as well. So, um, may, I make one, may I make one comment before? Uh, well, one second. Okay. Um, Wayne, um, because there are two special permits in the site plan. We, we have to vote individually on all three. Yeah, that's okay. We can vote on them together. Yeah. Um, because in essence, that's how you're viewing it. It's, it's the overall package. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's fair to the town to say that you change the lighting if you have right. a place for the snow or if you do blue. I just... Right. Very mm -hmm. often, we get plans that when they come to us, we don't like. Mm -hmm. And through the process of conditioning and working with the applicant, we can make them to the point where we think they're up they're, 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 they're good. I just don't see how it's possible. All in waste time. Yeah, yeah. with yeah. a particular place. Right. Yeah. Mr. McCall? Yeah, yeah, I, and I appreciate that. If, uh, you know, obviously, if it's lighting or something, that can, we can try to satisfy. So I appreciate that, that comment. But I do want to make sure that, that the board understands that the only alternative that decision, and, and please, I haven't set it up till now because I don't want it to be perceived as a threat, but the only alternative, if that's the decision, is to reopen this as a gas station. Because we can't, uh, I mean, as much as we might like it, nobody's going to come along and buy it to build a brick office building with storage on the first floor, offices on the second, and housing on the third, perhaps. I mean, that's not going to happen. And I think, I know that it will reopen as a gas station. To me, for the citizens of Northampton, yeah, you have a choice between that and something that's better, um, but not perfect. And so I just uh, ask you to consider the fact that it will reopen, which does mean that there's two gas stations within 100 yards of each other. Um, wh whether it continues or not, I don't know. Whether somebody does come along, I don't know. But it was our thought when we presented this that this particular project is so much closer to the sustainability study, so much closer to uh, the stormwater management, pedestrian flow, everything, that it was a huge improvement over what was there. And that's why we think that it should be, it should be at least looked at carefully and, and approved. If the answer is, we don't care, open the gas station, have a nice day, then that's fine. I don't, my point is that I don't think that's the right thing for Florence or the right thing for the citizens who travel by there and the citizens who live there. So that's, I'd, I'd ask that you consider that. Yep. I have a question. I think I heard you say that you were going to take up the old tanks and put in new tanks that were safer. Correct. So why would it be your opinion that no one else would be willing to take up those old tanks? Oh, I, I, I'm not assuming that they wouldn't be. I, I was uh, trying so to... So why would it be only a service station oh. that it could ever become if you could take care of cleaning it up? I, we don't believe it needs cleaning up. Um, it's just that this, the tanks that are there are not state-of-the-art, so if this project were to go forward, they have said we will take those existing tanks out and put in state-of-the-art tanks. It doesn't mean that these aren't functioning fine. It's just their, com their company policy. So I'm still trying to understand okay. why it's your opinion that only a service station could ever go in. Because right now, 
that's what is allowed. And I don't believe that somebody's oh, going to... I'm not talking about the one that's there. I mean, you were saying that no one would ever build on that building. And I'm, I thought you were trying to intend, indicate to me that there was some contamination on the site. Oh, no, no, no. I think one of the speakers spoke of 21E. We have no reason to believe that this site or the old site has any 21E okay. issues. Thank you. I just need okay. to understand that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's good. Oh, All right, sorry, um, Long Trap? Long Trap. Long Trap, sorry. I'm just so, going to address Ms. Bruce. Well, no, point. I just say, so we we're closed. closed public hearing, so we, we're no longer. I know you had your hand up just one okay. second. Okay, so. no, that's fine. Um, so um, I think we were all pretty clear, so um, I would look at the motion. Uh, I'm just. Brent, can you go, Brent? Did you move your right Go ahead, Sam. Uh, I move that we reject the application for major special permit with site plan for Cumberland Farms, 100 Main Street, Florence, map IDs 23A, 67, and 68. Second. And special permit or just the second? Pardon? And doing a special permit as well? Or just the second? Special permit and site Special permit and site plan. And site plan. Okay. I'm right. sorry. And I think it was... It only says special permit on here. Okay. I think it was... Uh, a unanimous second, so. We all second. Everybody second. I did. <laughs> uh, Marilyn. Uh, any further discussion? All right. So the motion is to deny. So a vote on this is to deny the permit. So all in favor of the denial? All opposed? Thank you. Thank you.
from Heritage Surveys of Southampton representing uh, Spaces for Rent. Uh, Robert Foote, the owner of Spaces for Rent, is here. And we have um, tonight obtained approval from the Conservation Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for a project that would um, contain two new buildings at Mr. Foote's property on Industrial Drive for the use of storage buildings. And I'd like to run through the PowerPoint presentation for you. Um, first slide is, is the uh, face of the building with your back towards Industrial Drive uh, and the office space to it being proposed. Oops, wrong button, sorry. So what is being proposed is two buildings in t on the plan the, that are before you. Uh, building 9 is a 10 by 200 foot storage building and consistent with the other storage buildings on the property. And building 10 is a 65 by 115 foot building, which is a controlled climate building for um, storage units so that they are heated in the wintertime and cooled in the summertime. Oops, wrong button again. Uh, overview, this is the Coke plant. Diagonal across is the existing spaces for rent facility with the cul-de-sac roundabout within the industrial park building there. Um, these are the plans that I'll quickly go through. Um, they're kind of small, but um, and a little bit light on the PDFs or the uh, PowerPoint. Uh, there currently are eight buildings located on the property um, that are out there today. And kind of give you a bigger picture here. Uh, building one, which, which contains the office, which is straight off of the street. Building two, and the remaining buildings on the property themselves. The parcel is uh, just under nine acres in size. Uh, it contains two parcels that were purchased by Mr. Foote over the years from the city uh, in association with the uh, development of the industrial park. Mr. Foote has been there um, for since 1974, since 1974 in the industrial park. Um, further on in the slides, I've got some enlargements of the areas, but they're kind of hard to see, so I'll kind of skip through these kind of details. But uh, this is building two. Building one, where the office is, is right here. Industrial Drive is to the right, and this is the 10 by 200 foot storage unit being proposed here. The doorways for the individual units will be located between Building 2 and Building uh, 9, which is the proposed building in this area here. The roof runoff um, is all sloped to the rear into downspouts and gutters into a stormwater basin, which is located in the rear of the building itself. And this is a picture of it. Um, the building would be in this green grass area here. The building to the right is building two. Um, the new building nine would be located here. Are the, uh, the tree buffer, are, there, are those the trees remaining? Or yes, no. Nope. The tree that you see right here is remaining. No, the standard trees behind it? Yes, they're all remaining. Right, so that'll be the that buffer stays between you and your, your neighbors? Correct. Correct. Um, if you look at the um, plans, the, uh, the uh, trees are actually on the butter property. Um, so, that 
That's what they're saying. Yeah. saying. Uh, this is building 10 in the rear of the site. This is the controlled air facility. A little different than the other storage units because you don't have all these little doors that you enter your unit from in. You enter one main door, which is accessed here. And they're inside the building are hallways with units off of it. So this building only has two doors. An entrance door here and a fire egress door here. Secondary access for fire protection. So once um, somebody rents a unit within this building, they would come in, park their vehicle here, unload, and go inside the building and use their storage container. Um, for whatever they would like to. How many units are inside that one? Um, inside that one, um, it's going to be 70 units total inside. And they range from 5 by 10 to larger build, uh, sizes. Um, people you know, have various needs, and there's different sizes for it. Um, this building, unlike the other one, has a, a ridge or a peak. So down the center of it, is the ridge of the building and the roof runoff from this goes to the east or to the side collected into downspouts and goes into a stormwater basin designed over here which we got permitted from the Conservation Commission tonight. Uh, this side goes into another stormwater basin <coughs> here. Uh, this new pavement area goes into a what is known as a bio-retention area uh, that complies with DEP's stormwater management policy um, that filters um, what they call TSS, or total suspended solids, out of the rainwater uh, from pavement areas and filters it before it ever discharges towards the resource areas or the wetlands, in this case being over here and over this section here. And this is a picture of where the building 10 would be um, over in this area here. And again, so none of the trees are coming out? Uh, some of the trees in this area, yes, are, are coming out. Um, this property, when it was purchased, uh, let me go back to the slide, um, has a deeded buffer um, of 50 feet from the abutting properties to the south. Um, and I guess this plan really doesn't show it. But there's a deeded tree buffer. Um, so yeah, that's 50 it's feet. on this plate. It's yeah. in our plate. Right. So it's, it's 50 feet of a buffer, tree buffer, that's going to remain there. There are a few trees that need to be cut, mainly in this back quadrant here. Whoops, wrong button, sorry. Uh, mainly in this area here uh, from this pic picture. Uh, but the, the but nothing goes yeah you you show yeah. Uh, some fence and nothing's going on the buffer correct and that's a, a deeded that's a deeded buffer um, when this when Mr. Foot purchased it from the city it has nothing to do with conservation commission buffer uh, who owns it uh, Mr. Foot oh okay it's part of your property yes it, it's a buffer that runs around the whole industrial park so that you can't build anything within 50 feet of the people outside the park. Okay. Are there restrictions on, um, like, you have to keep it up in a certain way? Do you have to plant trees on it? No, I think the neighbors use it to poke bunch their, their leaves and their branches and put right. their yards in it. Actually, the uh, abutter to the south of us is encroaching, yeah. if you see on the plan, on the Mr. Bush property in that buffer. Yeah, the overhead? Yes, the overhead and lawn area. Yeah. Um, but, so. Okay. Um, this is building nine, typical you know, storage units, looking at a floor plan. You know, these units have uh, different size uh, units, five by 10s, 10 by 10s, 10 by 15s, and you know, typical storage units with doors every, uh, in each bay. Um, this is an elevation of the um, building 10 in the back. Um, it will be metal sided, and this is the emergency pass door for the building. Height of building is only 10 feet for both buildings, so they're, they're not very tall at all. Um, we, VHV did a traffic report, which is part of your packet. 
And uh, we, we wanted to look at um, how many trips per day uh, were coming out of storage units and in and out, um, which are very, very small numbers. Uh, and of course, it is an industrial. So that's within that area, or within your uh, filing of packet. So I'll kind of skip through. Unless, yeah, unless Devin, Devin's probably the only one who understands this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've, I've read through the traffic report, too. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the next section I have is relative to the stormwater drainage system. Um, Wayne has copies of the report. Yeah, did you, uh, is the DPW, uh, there was one open issue about the 10 year? Two. Two issues with DPW. The um, 10 year flood? Yes. The second issue? Uh, two, two issues. Uh, one issue was the total suspended solid removal, with TSS removal, and by having a bio retention area, that satisfies it. You need to have 80% minimum. Bio retention area gives you 90%. So the revised plans, <coughs> excuse me, um, do uh, meet that criteria. The other request from DPW was that the stormwater basins for building 10 um, <coughs> excuse me, draining um, for the 10 year storm event within 72 hours. Uh, so that if we have a rain event or 10 year storm event within 72 hours, if we get another storm event, the stormwater system can handle it. And the revised plans meet that criteria. Has the DPW uh, No. Okay. No, the D DPW has not uh, signed off on it yet. Um, we just worked out these plans this week, and um, they have not. Uh, so the condition of Carolyn gave you the staff to pull this that. Right. 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 So we're going we're gonna to condition the permit that you have to have instead from the DPW. Correct. That's fine. Yeah. And we got permission, or we got approval tonight from Conservation Commission that uh, this, the site doesn't require a stormwater permit because we're not disturbing over an acre. Right. That's um, why but it is under jurisdiction of of the Conservation Commission and because it's a major project. You know. Right, but, but the DBW still has to, even yes. though you don't need a stormwater permit, if you had that a stormwater permit, we wouldn't even be able to vote. Right. So yep. because you don't need it, we're going to condition that the, those two things are resolved. Yeah, and DBW. we feel we've them. Okay. So. I'm sorry, did someone look where you guys started? And just one of the conditions and, and concerns that the Conservation Commission has and, and requirements from DEP is that a site doesn't have an increase in stormwater runoff from what's existing there today to what would be after the buildings are built. So within the calculations, we have a table that shows for each storm event, we have a decrease in stormwater runoff from the site uh, by uses, even with the low flow pipe um, that handles the runoff uh, requirement from um, of 72 hours for draining the basin. I was very happy to see a 100 year storm up there. I don't see that. Yeah. Well, you know, in, in uh, reality, if you look at the numbers um, within this table, this, the project is not very large, um, so the numbers are very small. Um, you know, the, the highest um, runoff is 0.88 CFS, you know, less than one CFS of rainfall during a 100-year storm event. It's very small volume of water coming off of it. So we were able to design the systems to handle all storm events and have a decrease in the peak runoff. Um, kind of relative to Conservation Commission, but I'll just touch on it. Um, in, in order to comply with uh, the local wetlands bylaw that Northampton has, we have to do mitigation. Um, so we have a complete mitigation project, which will include plantings um, of trees and shrubs uh, in association with the projects, and they're noted on the plans. Um, also, some cleanup of the area. Um, there's some railroad ties and so forth that are on the site. Uh, that would be it. Um, this is the environmental end of it that 
I'll kind of skip through, but this is the environmental report, report from GZA that did the wetland delineation for the project. And this is some of the wetlands issues uh, that we, we uh, have dealt with through the Conservation Commission. The USGS map um, currently shows and did show a perennial stream running right through the middle of the industrial park. And so that we had to d demonstrate that the perennial stream is no longer there and the sections that are there um, are not flowing anymore. The perennial stream is, is a stream that flows year-round. Um, and from the southerly side of the site towards Bradford Street is the old stream bed. And those are pictures of the stream bed. And so we had to document um, it's four, four days, consecutive days, without it, you know, and can't be in a drought. And of course, this year we're definitely not in a drought. Uh, showing that there's no flow of storm water, or no flow in the stream channel. So those are kind of pictures that we that are part of this application. So that's um, thank you. Um, any questions from the board? Did uh, the lighting thing get addressed? Yeah, there was one yeah. other uh, issue about the uh, you're showing five foot candles at the door over building ten. Yes, and, and you're allowed three. Have you guys addressed that? Um, it, it, that's going to be a condition that we have three. Uh, we have no issue with that. Right. That will be a condition of the permit as well. It's, yeah. it's simple. It's a one 150 volt bulb. If you drop it to 100 volt bulb, it's yeah. going to be so kind of right. Right. Yeah. That's what you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, building nine doesn't have any lighting at all. There's existing lighting on building two, so we don't need any lighting whatsoever on building nine, which is closest to. Uh, industrial Drive, Building 10, we have two wall packs, one over each door. And then we have a third one on the easterly side, uh, just for safety and protection. Okay, yeah, the, the, the Catherine, or sorry, Carolyn um, specifically addressed the door over Building uh, 10. So 10, yeah. yeah. So we have that as a condition. Yeah, and that's not a problem. We can reduce that to 100 watt volt. Okay. Any other questions from the board? So I guess the because the profile is different for each one. So you could you know a store couldn't you couldn't hear your plan is good for hundred year and not good for ten years. I understood that that one went to no, what they were curious about, what the DBW asked was that the, um, the the applicant has not shown that water can be absorbed in 72 hours for four and a half inch rainfall. So there was one very specific question. Right. right. They didn't meet that criteria. Right. That's a local requirement from DPW uh, under the State Wetlands Protection Act. Uh, you don't need to um, meet that requirement of four and a half inches of rainfall. Um, you only have to meet 0.25. For recharge into the ground, uh, that's a local EPW policy. But typically, what we do, and they can the stormwater permit. If this was an over an acre of disturbance, uh, they would have to get a stormwater permit. Which the DPW issues, we can't even vote on the permit until they've gotten it. If the DPW can't be satisfied, we can't even vote on it. Um, when it's less than that, but it's a site plan, the DPW can weigh in because they're basically the city's engineer, so they have to look at the plans to make sure as the engineer of the city that the plans are uh, meet the specs um, and they confer the conditions so they send us their conditions. But typically we rely on them to make any kind of decisions based on uh, And we were able to to uh, address those two concerns. Uh, so that yeah. um, anybody I would ask Mr. Foote, is there anybody from the public who'd like to speak to this permit? Um, I've listened to enough tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, did you guys have to go to the ZBA? Oh, we were right no, behind, yeah, we're behind them in the ZBA, too. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long night. Um, yeah. Randy? I actually did a site visit to the city. And the only thing you'll be able to see from Industrial Drive is the building, the end of Building 9. And all the rest of the stuff is a place I never saw, never knew even existed. Yeah, right. Yeah, this. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And that view right here. The end of this 10 foot wide building is. Um, 
All right, so we can be, well, one of you guys has the agenda. So, is there any other questions for the board? We, I would say we should close the public hearing. I'm going to close the public hearing. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Okay. Um, any discussions on the project? With the two conditions as noted that uh, reduce the lighting levels to three foot candles and that they must uh, have the DPW sign off on the uh, 10 year flood. Uh, and also, I'll give you somewhere in Oh, and? Yeah. Well, in its entirety. And for TSS. Uh, for right. right. I, I would just toss in there that they should be uh, the zoning, I mean, the lighting regulations in general specifically mention that one thing. But that's sort of a catch all thing. Okay. There are no parking issues. Um, any further discussion? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day for us, too. I'm in favor of whatever it was. Well, uh, who's that? Do you move it? Yeah, go ahead. I don't have a language. I move uh, that we uh, approve the major site plan spaces for the 94 industrial drive of the ID 25 A-2 with conditions. With three conditions. Three conditions. Three conditions. Any discussion? All in favor? Now we do it. Okay, thank you.